Hello, everybody, and welcome to our new D&D campaign, City Dwarves, A Cobbler's Story. How are my favorite players doing today? Oh, we're your favorite. Is that us? That's you Aww. guys. That's the three of you. Mm -hmm. Everyone out there hear that? We're the favorite. So. Mm -hmm. You have so many shows, dude. This is high stakes. <laughs> I know. I'm pretty sure he says that to everyone, but I'll still pretend like he does. I would never. Uh, okay. Okay, Neil. That's We've ridiculous. We've probably played more games than most of them with Neil, at least. True. Absolutely. Yes. Then actually that could justify us being the favorites and it being believable. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody, welcome to City Dwarves. It's a new campaign about dwarves in a city. Um, it's also entitled A Cobbler's Story because our three sisters are the children of cobblers who sadly died in a recent plague and now have taken over their family's cobbling store, which is a shoemaking store for those of you that don't speak old English. Um, and uh, unfortunately, our new dwarven cobblers are not that great. They're young, young dwarves learning the skills of the trade but like not that great at it um and before we get into too many details about the campaign i would love for each of you to introduce yourselves as a person and as a character so that we can just get a, a feel for who's gonna be here um so why doesn't the the face of the party start how does it go with me the face uh yes i am the face i am don't hate me because I'm popular. Okay. Um, my name is Lasley. I am the oldest sister. Mm -hmm. Why not? And um, I have long, dark, dark blue hair. Mm. Um, she's probably died. I don't know. But she would claim it's not. Mm -hmm. um, and... I like to talk and play my zither. Probably what is both a at the zither? Same time. A zither is um, kind of like a dulcimer mixed with a harp. Mm. And it sits flat and you strum it. I have learned all of this today and purchased a zither of my own and will be playing it myself. Um, it's a very cool instrument if you want to look it up. But basically you imagine like someone sitting with something on their lap and going brum, 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 while they sing. Wow. And my real name is Anna Prosser and I do a lot of D and D stuff and used to work for Twitch and am writing a book of poetry. Mm. Those are some interesting things about me. Wonderful. Uh, next up is going to be the body. That's me. Uh, hey guys, uh, in real life, uh, my name is Rachel and I'm a host for like esports gaming events. Uh, Anna and I way back in the day used to do uh, E3 coverage, TwitchCon coverage, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you can catch me now bouncing around doing, uh, gosh, I don't even know, not a whole lot playing the show though. Glad to see y'all. And uh, <laughs> uh, I'll be playing a character called Baldara. Now Baldara is the middle sister. Uh, Baldara is known as <laughs> the body because Baldara is ripped. Uh, she's huge by dwarven standards. She stands at five foot five. Uh, and she's just got, I would say, her most envious feature, this incredible beard. Just luscious, black, grows in thick and dark, just like her hair. And it grows in, like, weekly. And so Baldara loves to, like, kind of shave it and cut it and trim it into different styles. Uh, she used to wear it really, really long. She used to just really buy into a lot of things about dwarven culture that she was sold early on, but then she had a very devastating breakup, uh, cut it all off in a fit of sadness, and has <sighs> since kind of just reclaiming the joy of life. So this plague, uh, this 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 funeral, this this other thing that's going on, and and all the chaos that we'll get into is really upsetting for uh, mm -hmm. Baldara, mm -hmm. who's just trying to, like, uh, joy de vie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, we have the mind. No, the heart? We have the heart. The heart. I'm sorry. But you can also call her the mind. It's okay. She'll accept both. Uh, so, yeah, my character is Pebble. No S. I know it's tempting. Uh, it's just Pebble. Just one. I mean, she is one. So that makes sense, really. Uh, <laughs> so late, recently, I've really gotten into this thing where my character has slight resemblance with me because it makes it easier to pull off. So she also has red hair. Um... I, I did put tan skin, but the more I think about it, like you, you know, it's probably really pale. 
<laughs> she does spend a lot of time outside, but actually, let's say that she's spending it in the shadows. That's why she's so pale. Uh, she's kind of dodging from shadow to shadow. Um, because her skin really burns easily. Mm -hmm. uh, so she spends most of her days practicing march, martial arts in the shade, mm -hmm. uh, keeps her hair long in a messy bum. Uh, she does have stubble on her chin. She's really trying to grow a beard, but kind of failing. It's really mm -hmm. upsetting for a dwarven culture to not mm -hmm. get a full beard. She's looking up to her sister, really pissed at that. It'll come someday, maybe. She's the youngest sister, you know? She still mm -hmm. has some time to catch up. Mm -hmm. um, she has a bandage on her nose. She broke it recently, not in battle. She stepped on a rake. Um, she'd like it to have been from battle. Didn't happen. Uh, she has bandages on her hair and feet, but those are for practice. She carries a staff. She's so proud of her staff. She brings it everywhere, everywhere at the table, in bed. It's like kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> it's a branch. And if you squint really, really hard, the tip kind of looks like a dragon from a specific angle, but from a duck from another. It's pretty <laughs> silly. Um, so her basically, if you've if you've been following me so far, you understand she's the dork of the party. Uh, she knows stuff. She's a tryhard, slightly annoying, reads a lot, kind of smart, stealthy, okay fighter, not as good as her sister, not very charismatic like her other sister. That's okay. Uh, mm. She likes to try to help her family and aspires to kind of emulate them, you know, just mm -hmm. doing her best. Uh, yeah, it's kind of her. Excellent. Pebble. Excellent. So the three of you are children just coming of age uh, from a pair of dwarven cobblers, like we've said before. You've lived your whole life in this city and have rarely traveled beyond its walls, just for weddings and family visits to cousins and aunts and uncles and that sort of thing. Um, all was going well for your trio until the sickness came through town. Both your parents succumbed to the illness as it burned through the city. The clerics helped where they could, but there weren't enough of them. As quickly as it came, the sickness left, and in its wake, the three of you inherited the workshop with the sales front and the upstairs house. While you're all daughters of these cobblers, and you know your way around a shoe, none of you are experts in the fields yet. You're all pretty young. Uh, we didn't specify ages exactly. Dwarves take like twice as long as humans to come to like full grown maturity. So you're all somewhere in that like probably 30 to 60 year old range of people. Very young for the, the dwarves. Um, for, for anyone, really. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> to make matters worse when you came home from the big funeral the city threw for all the plague victims your workshop had been ransacked the tools broken repair jobs ruined prototype shoes smashed money stolen and in the middle of the floor placed on a small pillow stolen from one of your bedrooms was a left boot a left boot from a set that had come in a few days ago to be repaired and you hadn't gotten to yet and it was fixed perfectly this intentionally fixed and placed boot was a message get out of the cobbling business now or else there are many other cobblers in town but one of them is starting to play dirty now in the meantime in order to make ends meet you've had to take out some money from a loan shark to get some repairs done and just to make ends meet there have been rumors spreading around that the quality of your work is pretty bad and whereas your parents once had you know loyal customers those customers have sort of vanished and now it's just the the people who live on your block more or less who come to you to repair their stuff rather than any new um any new business coming in now this is this is the the backstory where we're going to start our campaign like right now uh, is this things are getting tight around the dwarven household ends are not getting met. You've had to borrow money from some sketchy people who this guy we just know as the loan shark his name. Nobody really knows it. He's kept it kind of quiet. You suspect he might be playing on multiple levels of society and doesn't want word getting out. So you know where he works. You know where to find him. Don't know his name. Um, clients have been leaving you, as we said. The word out on the street is that you're not your parents' daughters when it comes to cobbling. Although you do have good ideas, you just aren't quite fully skilled yet to implement them all. Um, you're still getting some, some repair work that you can manage, but you're getting behind on it. When you come downstairs one morning to find the workshop clean, all the repairs that you had scheduled done, 
and your larder slash pantry broken into. And that's where we're going to start our campaign is our players coming downstairs in the morning to find that someone has been here and someone did all of your work in the middle of the night. And it's early morning and the streets are just starting to get busy outside. You're looking around your perfectly picked up and cleaned workshop. Ooh, I heard the doorbell. So it's all clean, but somebody broke into the pantry? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go check the pantry. Is my chocolate still there? No. <gasps> this is an emergency! Oh, God. Uh, Boldar is going to come down the stairs last, kind of rubbing her head. Boldar has been staying out late at night at the taverns. What are you yelling about this early? Boldara, did you do this during the night? Is that uh, why you look tired and are showing up a little later? Boldara looks at the pantry and sees only the pantry absolutely ransacked. And she's like, maybe I... No, no, I, I wouldn't have touched the chocolate. Lizuli's dark chocolate is <laughs> gross. <gasps> How dare you? Facts. I will search the pantry. Are there wow. any, like, crumbs, clues, smells, smudges? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, why don't you make me an investigation check to look for clues in the pantry? I have no buff to investigation. Well, but I got six. It's kind of hard. Your house has kind of been a mess, a little bit of a mess. And there's flour all over the place. And with the, I don't know how good of an inventory you've been keeping on what you have in hand. So you're looking around and you're like, oh, there's no crackers. But then someone's like, but I ate the crackers yesterday. And you're like, okay, well, those were, that's why that's missing. Um, And it's kind of hard to tell what's gone, except the chocolate's gone. Um, and there are some eggshells on the ground and there's flour spilled everywhere. Almost like somebody cooked something in your house in the middle of the night. I go check the oven. Yeah, yeah, this definitely wasn't me. It smells like cookies because there is <gasps> a small tray of cookies sitting in the oven. They they, they clean our house and made us cookies. Mm -hmm. Our house is clean? Boldara turns around. <laughs> <laughs> Does this look like cookies from like a family recipe? Do I feel like it could be, you know, an uncle or somebody I know? Nobody you know would ever do this crazy thing. I don't know if you could tell the difference between cookies. What would what sort of check would you make to identify a cookie? <laughs> well, I mean, let's pretend, you know, like, you know, my, my mom has certain recipes. Right. She does course, that course. I know my grandmother did. Of so course. like in theory, I could recognize her cooking. Okay. So that's kind of what I was going off of. So what, but what check is that? I want you to roll dice to determine. Insight? History. Insight or history, yeah. Let's do insight. Yes, yeah. Insight you taste the cookies good. is what I'm I'm hearing. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, they're Delicious. pretty good. They're, they're actually very good. Um, you don't know this recipe at all. This is hmm. a, a completely foreign recipe. You're You're sure of it because these actually taste really good. And no offense to your mom, but her cookies were always a little dry. And your aunts and uncles, you know, they used to use a lot of nuts in their cookies. And these mm. these are just chocolate cookies. Speaking mm. of which, this is probably where your chocolate went. Although, <laughs> so looking at it, there's definitely more chocolate that should have been around. Like maybe someone made cookies and then ate most of them and left a few here. Mm. Mm. So I'm like, with my mouth full, I'm like, yeah, not our mom. It's cookie. They're you really that? good poisoned. though. Poisoned. Are you poisoned? I thought I was supposed to be the wise one. I guess I'm <laughs> losing this once again. <laughs> <laughs> when Boldara hears that they're not mom's recipe, because mom uses like sulfurous lava salt, like you'd be able to tell. Uh, she immediately like grabs a big hammer off the wall, which is in like a perfect place, I'm assuming, well mm -hmm. dusted and, and mm -hmm. appointed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm I'm gonna clear the room, like SWAT clear, like make sure nobody's in there. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you walk around the workshop area. If we take a look at the little map here, this is your, your actual workshop. Oh. And then um, this is the, these like saloon style doors that head out to the, what's the room where you try on shoes? I don't know if it has a particular name, but the, the foyer. The, the foyer, yes. The, oh. And the then um, here's the, <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the, the counter across which you do business. And it's got two levels. There's a, a high level for, you know, humans and tall people. And then there's a shorter level for dwarves and halflings and, and shorter people. And they're kind of like stacked on top of each other. And you need to get like on top of a stool to get to the top one to talk to the humans, but it's like built a little bit too high. So it's uncomfortably high for a human. And then you're standing on a stool. So now you're looking down at them. It's a very <laughs> dwarven him. make and model. Um, but yeah, this back workshop over here, totally cleared. And then if you go through these doors. And I, I do, let me grab my game. Uh, the yes. storefront, the showroom. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Storefront. <laughs> that um, sounds way better. <laughs> You can see that this area has not been cleaned. It's still hmm. sort of dusty and dirty and messy. And if you would make me a investigation check, please. I look disappointed that they missed a spot. <laughs> you can see through the little dust and dirt that's here, there are a couple of prints heading out the door, little tiny footprints. They're covered in a little bit of ash, like um, the sort of ash you would have inside of a stove after you, you feed it wood or coal to, to get it going over the night. And when you say prints, are these animals, hooves, paws, feet? Shoe? Shoes. Shoe prints. Are they what size? made? They are very small. They're smaller than dwarven sized. They're like, you know, really small. So maybe a dwarven dog child shoes. or or a dog. Yes, you might think that it could be a dog. It's possible. Um, and you have not repaired any shoes like this recently, but you have been known to make shoes for halflings and gnomes and small children in the past. It could be um, one of the things that you have here. Where are my notes on this? Um, is you have some lasts. A last is a model of a foot that you would use to build a shoe around. And so when you're working <laughs> on shoes... Because that was a journey of a description, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when you're working on making shoes, you, you need like a foot to test it with in order to Check make sure that, that it, it fits. Um, mm -hmm. And so if you're not going to have someone who's around all the time, so you can keep testing it on their foot, you need to like carve a wooden model of their foot. It's called a last. Mm. Um, and you have a whole bunch of these scattered around mm. your workshop of all sorts of different sizes. Some are like this person in particular and others are like generic boot size for this sort of person. Um, so you could take your lasts and go and compare them and see if any of them would match this footprint size, if you'd like. And Neil, if Boldaro were smart or a critical mm -hmm. thinker or mm -hmm. had a sense of like object permanence beyond her vision, she mm -hmm. would think this maybe. Mm -hmm. But she just sees the tiny footprints mm -hmm. and, um, you know, like a Tom and Jerry cartoon is just going to kind of auto follow them <laughs> to their just conclusion Just like nose now. to the ground. Yeah. Like, Excellent. maybe not even let you know, but you'll probably hear me, like, slamming open whatever passes for a door in our ransack shop. Mm-hmm. Well, you can start to head on out, um, and that is where the trouble begins to brew. Because as no, you go yes. to open the door, uh, uh, outside are three of these thugs. These good. are the no. workers of the, uh, the Lone Shark. And they're coming to collect their weekly interest fees. And they see you stepping out of the shop. And they give you a look. And they're all humans. And one of them says, Ugh. Baldora, it's time to pay up. You got your cash? And I, I recognize them. I've been dealing with these guys mm -hmm. like back and forth, like mm -hmm. name wise. Like, do I? Yeah, you could have learned their names if you wanted to. Absolutely. Um, See him around the tavern in there? Yeah, yeah. The the one here who's talking to you's name is Pad. Pad. Yeah, uh, if you want the other's names, their names Ooh. are uh, Barbara and Quincy. <clears throat> uh, 
Yeah, Boldara is going to uh, barrel through the door, and upon hearing her name, look up like a like a like a bit of a like a dog, like startled from its tracking. Mm-hmm. Um, but when she sees, oh, hey, 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 Barbara Quincy, good, uh, good afternoon, morning. Uh, it's been another weird one. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you looking for again? Well, just the weekly payment on interest for your loan. Assuming, of course, you're not ready to start paying back principal. Uh, I do believe the <laughs> weekly payment is two right, gold pieces. Do, so I'm going to stop you because that is that is the number stuff. Hold on. Let me get my sister. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Why don't you bring out Pebble? I, I heard this happening. I heard like, oh, Pad, Barbara. So I poked out the door. Is that Pad and Barbara? <gasps> Hi. Hi. Hey, oh, Quincy! So oh, Quincy! Oh, and I'm like, what a great day, right? So glad you're here. So weird, though. I'm pretty sure we already paid um, that other, you know, I'm trying to persuade them to give me mm-hmm. another name. <laughs> um, the other ones? They kind of look towards each other. We're supposed to be picking up. When did the... When you, did they come you by? You didn't send them? I th- I thought for I thought for sure we there's an imposter going around taking money. We don't have any more. They took our money. You have to go stop them. They just left. Barbara and like the scratches her head. I'm like in the background going, did they? Did we pay? And I'm looking at like at Boldara, like we you give the money. Lazuli like starts to well up. She's like, I just I wouldn't cheat you. I just we don't. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> can you make me a deception check, please? Uh, ooh, I have, I have plus five to deception. It's an oh eighteen. Oh my god! I, I run a liar, five. liar pants on fire. Mm-hmm. I thought you were gonna say something, Jen. Oh yeah, I I run inside to go like get the the book of like money we paid to people i'm pretty sure i'm tracking it somewhere Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm like trying to find it but it wasn't this one spot that i always put it which Mm. doesn't really make sense and this person placed it elsewhere Mm -hmm. so i'm looking for it and i'm not coming back but i'm trying to see the proof here right well pad will say hold okay please 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 you gotta tell us it's what okay. these people look like. You can call like. me Zuzu. We're close. You don't have to stand on. <laughs> Zuzu, Zuzu. It... Why don't you tell us what these people look like? We can't have other folks muscling in on our turf. You're gonna have to pay that money back. We'll give you an extra week, but we gotta know what these folks look like. <laughs> okay, that's really fair. I think um, they were. Uh, they're Hana- worth. Th- How- th- three of them uh-huh uh-huh um and they looked human i think um uh-huh and you know medium height um kind of medium hair kind of brown uh-huh. and then one was kind of like dark brown um they just looked they looked so trustworthy <laughs> You got any other details? Clothing? Weapons? Do they have weapons? Um, I didn't see them, but I wouldn't be surprised. Like, they seem like the kind of people that would have daggers, at least. Hmm. Medium size? I mean, brown hair? With darker brown hair? Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's not much to go on. But I know you can do it. I mean, of anybody, you would be able to find them. And you say they just came by. Like, I don't know. I look at a uh, Boldara like tw- twenty minutes ago, probably. Okay. Well, we'll ask about if anyone else has seen anything, and you get to work making that money. Boss is gonna did- want his payments. Okay. I mean, we did just have a break in today, but we'll do our best. Someone broke into your shop. Yeah. They they ate all my chocolate and and. It cleaned our house. Uh, okay. We cleaned our we cleaned our house because they left it a mess. Mm-hmm. I see. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds like your problem, not ours. Uh, however, if you would like to 
join the protection um, <clears throat> industry that we have going on over here. We offer insurance against break-ins. And now I know you can't afford it, but once you've paid back that 500 gold you owe, we can talk about getting you in on the protection plan. That's very kind. All right. Barbara, Quincy, let's hit the streets. And they begin to go to the next shop over um, and walk in to start asking questions. If anyone's seen three medium-sized brown-haired humans about... As soon as they turn their backs, Lazuli's like... <laughs> I come back like 30 seconds after, covered in dust, and I'm like, I found it! I found the accounting book! And I don't... I don't think we paid three... Yes, we money. did. We did. But it's we not did. in the... Yes, we did. It's while I was... Yes, caught. we did. Should I add it to the book? Yes. Okay. I, I I like write it, but like really, really pale. <laughs> She's like, you can erase it later. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I don't. Whoever cleaned the house didn't try to balance the books. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, the money collectors done away with for the time being. What is your number one priority here? You've got to find out who broke into your house if you care. You've got all these repaired shoes that you can now go return to their owners and get your money for them. Um, or what? Getting money sounds great. Uh, but do we usually do deliveries on, I want to say, a Tuesday? Do we? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Wait, to be fair, we do have a week before they come back. Mm -hmm. um, True. And I guess... the lead is really fresh. That's mm -hmm. true. Boldara, you were following the tracks. Maybe we should just see where those lead. Oh, I could do that. We could knock out the deliveries. Whatever you want, sis. Let's, let's see where the tracks lead. I mean... I guess it couldn't get much. Well, it could get worse. They they could have done much worse. Well, if somebody could come in and steal the repaired shoes. That would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but you do know, we, do I have any kind of like? I guess most of my magic is like, um, on people. I'm trying to yeah. see if I have any like trap spell or like guarding spell or anything like that. No, you've got speak with animals, um, disguise self, heroism, and Tasha's hideous laughter. I have for... a minor illusion. Yes. Within range, 30 feet. So I'd have to be in 30 feet of it. Mm -hmm. That's not gonna be helpful. Eh, yeah, I, I guess mean, I don't have anything. We already had a break in today. The odds, I mean, they're probably the same that we get a second break in, but you know. Do we have like a, do we have any neighbor shops that we're on good terms with? Absolutely, yeah. The shops to your left and right are people that you know and you know their business. You've known them their whole life, your whole life, probably actually their whole life, I think, since these are um, a human shop on either side of you. I'll go to the shop on the left. And I'll say that our shop's been broken into and we're going to chase down whatever lead we have. And would they just make sure, you know, to keep an ear and an eye out for any anyone suspicious coming in and out because we'll, we'll be out. Absolutely. That's what a good neighbor does. Yeah. I love our neighbors already. <laughs> we should offer them cookies. I was wondering about that. Maybe some gossip too are there any local legends about like like i don't know fey folk or or elves or anything that would leave your house in this state that and Buldara an... is making this exact pose and hunched down more scared and small than she's ever been asking this question that is a great question to ask and it's going to bring us to one of our story elements um that's going to play a big background detail 
This campaign takes place in the very, very early days of the world. We're talking like your parents were born into the world, but your grandparents appeared on the world, like magic into existence by gods. So you're Whoa. only a couple of generations removed from like the start of everything. So like legends and rumors and all that stuff is still pretty new and uh, there's a lot that people don't know about the world there's no ancient kingdoms there's no great lore of about the past this is brand new times um so when you go around asking people about like could fey folk maybe have done weird everyone's like yeah that sounds that sounds weird right i think i don't think they sleep i think they hang upside down like bats right that's what elves do. I think so. I think there's an elf that lives down the street. We should ask them if they hang upside down. No, wait, that's kind of rude. I don't know. What do you know? Why are you asking? Did you see something, Boldara? Well, I, yes. Okay, good. This is going to feed exactly into the kind of person Veldara is, which is she believes whatever you tell her with a t slightly convincing tone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, well, we'll keep an eye out for anything, but if you you hear anything or if you know anything is this the caginess of the neighbors that we we're talking to or uh -huh. is this okay cool yeah this is the neighbors to your left hmm well hmm Boldara thinks if she knows anything and she's like truly I, I know nothing that was it. <laughs> at all in general Excellent. uh jen what business do the neighbors to your left have uh they have a pastry shop Ooh, yes yeah that's why we wake up early mm-hmm well uh and anna what do but the they neighbors don't sell they don't sell any cookies I'm really so specific. hungry. I want dessert so bad. This is torture. I need cookies. I might literally order in cookies while we do this because mm -hmm. I now. Uh, yeah. Anyway, what were you saying, Neil? <laughs> the people on the right side, what do they do for work? What's their they shop? They are um, a tavern. Mm. All right. What's the tavern's name, Rachel? Oh, well, it was a little bit more relevant when I was allowed to visit that particular tavern. Uh, but that's the Ram Spiral, or as we call it, mm. the Ram's Ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why aren't you allowed to visit? Is that where your ex is from? <laughs> oh, uh, you got time and ale? <laughs> <laughs> Neil, this is a long one brewing. Okay. It had to do with uh, the ram's ass, and we thought <laughs> would be an appropriate present for the establishment's owner, which they saw ultimately no humor in. Got it. Got it. Okay. That was like last week. That, that, you know what? It's happened a couple times. Every time the next generation takes ownership, they're like, ah, we'll let Baldara back in. And every time, <laughs> they don't find the ram's ass funny. <laughs> they're All lost, right. honestly. Truly, thank you. It's hilarious. That's pretty good. Um, so, you've talked to the neighbors. They'll keep an eye out for things, except, well, the people on the left will. The, the pastry shop will keep an eye out on things. We, we don't talk to the ram spiral right now. Um, what is your? <laughs> you wanted to track. You wanted to see if you could follow these prints. Yeah, yeah, we're All following right. the prints. Right. I'm well, taking this... out my uh, magnifying glass if that exists. <laughs> uh, well, you do work with um, fine needlework, so yes, you do have a magnifying glass. Um, this is a, a busy street out here, so whoever's got the highest survival check, please make me a survival roll. I'd like to specify that I put on uh, my inspection hat for this. <laughs> of course. Of course you do. That's how you help yourself inspect. You said highest nature check? Survival, what please. Is survival check. I have plus two. Does anyone have higher? I have... Da, 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 da. No, zero. Is it me? Yes, please. It's you. I uh, 
have three plus three, yeah. Then it's you. Okay. All right. Well, of course, with the magnifying glass and the hat, like, what mm -hmm. would you expect? 18. Ooh. Oh. Nice. I was going to say that tracking uh, sooty prints through a busy street is almost impossible, but an 18 is actually the sort of role that you would need to do this. And sure enough, you find the prints. At first, they're pretty thick with that, that coal ad or wood ash that you're following. Um, and as you travel through the streets, it begins to get a little bit thinner and a little bit thinner. But with your magnifying glass and your 16 wisdom, you can certainly begin to follow them. This is where we're going to take the first break of our session. We're going to come back on the other side, hopefully with some cookies and also with some oh. more information about the tracking checks here. So catch you guys on the other side of a break. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to City Dwarves. Our party is tracking these prints through the city. Um, and with an 18, you follow them right to their source. <laughs> You cut through the streets, and it's not too terribly far until you come to one of the nearby parks. Um, and this is where the tracks run cold as you get off of the, the nice cobblestone walkway and step foot onto the grass, and you lose the tracks here in the park. Mm. 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 Ah, nuts. Do we see anyone with very small shoes around? <laughs> you you see nobody in the park at this hour. Um, it's still fairly mm. early in the morning. Uh, maybe someone might be walking their dog through here near in the near future or just recently passed, but it's the middle of the work week. Mm. No one's here with Is their kids. Anybody stationary? Like one of those early morning, like grandma, grandpa situations on the bench with the ducks and the bread? Mm -mm. They could have been here hours, no? Mm. No, no grandparents, no pond, just mm. trees and nice uh, stone circles to hold the trees in. Are there little animals? Didn't one of us speak to little animals? Mm, yes, there are birds in the trees. Um, I speak and to you animals. See a I look at you and I look at the squirrel and then I look at you and then I look at the squirrel. Speak with animals has a long casting time. It takes 10 minutes. Mm. So I will make myself comfortable on a park bench and become one with nature mm -hmm. <laughs> while I think about how to speak to this squirrel. Mm -hmm. Must be a difficult thing mm -hmm. to speak with a squirrel. Have mm -hmm. you spoken with squirrels before, sister? Shh. I'm channeling the fluffy tail. The walnut that becomes a tree. She's being the walnut. And I kind of push it's Pebble back. In... <laughs> it's insane. I wish I could also channel the squirrel. If it was me, I'd just go like, me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean in squirrel, Pebble? I don't know, but maybe she does. <laughs> we should ask her when she's doing the squirrel channel. <laughs> maybe she'll pick up on my squirrel chance. <laughs> Mm. Um uh while while sister is channeling, uh Boldara would like to maybe check uh so this is like an open flat park with like just okay. I see the pictures here. There's mm -hmm. any yeah. obvious hiding spots? Like is there like a little like in those bushes, like a clothes rack and a like, Yeah, like, you want to start stuff? searching bushes? Yeah, just very obvious, blatant, yeah. full-on searching of this part. Yeah, you can do a quick perimeter search while the spell is being cast. Poke your head into bushes here, over these little walls. Take a look around. Um, there's absolutely nothing unusual anywhere here or there. There is a little pile of um, shell casings, like uh, walnut shell casings in the bottom mm. left over here. Shotgun. Uh, <laughs> not sure. I realized. Yes. That's what I thought. Yeah, I was like, what it's, happened to the book? It's, it's, so, it's so ominous suddenly. Aaron, don't talk to those squirrels. Yeah, there's some walnut shells over here and some peanut shells kind of nearby. Um, must be people who were sitting on the park eating and tossing their shells behind them sort of thing. Um, outside of this little square, there are tall buildings, maybe like three or four story buildings everywhere with windows that look in. So it's possible that one of the people who lives bordering the park might have been looking out their window. But kind of Ooh. unlikely, you know, it's a big city. 
who's looking out their window at a park Grandma's. and then remembers maybe maybe mm. well when Boldara like looks up the the wall of buildings in her very obvious panning does she mm -hmm. notice any of the windows going like <laughs> like curtains closing or like a nosy neighbor that totally would have been watching mm. the park give me a perception check somebody with like the <laughs> No. I don't know how they're called. <laughs> Not at all. Mm -hmm. It's um, all good. Can I do... I know we said she's doing a perimeter search, but can I do a literal perimeter search? Like, walk around the edges of the park and look at, like, you know, where would you go from here mm, type mm -hmm. of situation? Yeah. The park has the entrance from the north that, from which you came, uh, and it also has an entrance to the south. Uh, or I guess an exit to the south, and that's it. The the left and right sides, the east and west, are bordered by um, the okay. backs of buildings. There are a couple of doors, east and west, that like lead out into the park of houses that are there. So you know, two doors on the east and west side each, and then the main path on the north and south. Mm -mm. Yeah. Well, while we wait, I would assume they just went right through. So I would look if the tracks resume on the underside. Mm. On the south side. Mm -hmm. You won't find them on the south side. Now, that might be mm. because the grasses are dewy in the morning and yeah. all that little ash and dirt, that little that remained would have been kicked off. Or maybe the tracks ended here. <clears throat> but sooner or later, the, the spell is channeled and uh, you can speak with your squirrel friend. I have my, <clears throat> my mouth full of walnuts because I was channeling the squirrel. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I'm done with that, I say, friend squirrel, I, I beg your assistance as our home has been ransacked and evil beings violated our space. We're wondering if you saw something. Where's your home? That one. I point to it. Evil things in your home? I didn't see your home. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I was here. I didn't do it. I swear. I swear. No, I know you didn't do it. Did did any did you see anyone that wasn't me or them go in there? Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. I was busy. Busy here. Could, busy here all day. Could, didn't see could, us. Could could you ask around? To see to see anyone else was looking at your house? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She squints her eyes. It's kind of blurry. We can't see that far. Mm. You know, we, our, our limit, our vision's pretty small. I can, okay. I can see the the tall one, uh, but not far more than that. But I can ask, I can ask, and she will scurry off and uh, chat with her other squirrel friends up in the trees. <clears throat> and then, Lizzie, what does it look like when you're talking to the squirrel? Um, I think I get like. I look like that animal. Like there's little things like my like where my tail would be twitches every so often. And like my teeth are kind of like this. Yeah. Boldar I don't know that, <laughs> but that's just how the spell affects me. The squirrel comes Thank back. You. No, no, no. Didn't see anything outside of here. Nope. Nope. Just, just here. Did, just in the grass. Thank you for your help. Of course. Did, did you ask them if they saw anybody in the park today? Well, there, there's always people in the park, isn't there? I asked the squirrel, was there anyone in the park very early or very late today? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What'd yep, they yep. look like? Mm -hmm. Maybe... Five squirrels tall? Mm. Mm -hmm. So smaller than me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What uh, color was their fur? Uh, mm, ice cream. Vanilla ice cream color. Mm. That's so helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you see where they went? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. They live here. Where? They live here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they're always here early in the morning or late at night. Uh, except when they're not. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. 
they were here. I, and the squirrel will scamper across and uh, stop at this tree for a moment and then quickly scamper back to the side and hop back in the tree. Uh, I, I say thank you to the squirrel and I go check in this tree. Well, it's a big tree. It's the biggest tree in the park. Um, if you're going to check the tree, well, I mean, you can look in the branches and there's no one obviously in the branches. There's no one there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else you might want to check about the tree, but if you wanted to get any closer inspection, you'd have to, like, scramble up into the tree. Can I, like, investigate the trunk for any, like, hidden doors or anything, like Princess Bride style, the Pit of Despair? Absolutely. Give me a perception check. 11. You know what? As you're walking around the base of this tree, you do notice something you haven't seen there before. You're... I'm not sure how old you are. You're the oldest of these, so you're probably in your 50s by now. Um, and you've been in this park your whole life. You know, you, you live just down the street from it. Um, and yet there is a small door built into the backside of the tree that you've never seen before back over here. It's about five squirrels high. Um, and it's fairly well carved so that when it's closed, it sort of runs flesh, not flesh, flush with the tree. Uh, and rather than like a doorknob that sticks out, there's like a little, you know, you poke it and it hinges in on something or hinges back out on something, just like a little pokey thing that would then create some place where you can apply pressure to open the door. I'm going to knock on it. Knock, 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 knock. A few moments pass when the door opens and a figure stands inside looking up at you with the hair like vanilla ice cream, uh, pointed green ears-ish, or no, sorry, not green ears, pointed ears-ish, green clothing with like a, a green jacket with a kind of a dirty white shirt underneath, um, small shoes, small little pouch on her side. She looks like a forest gnome. So nice to meet you. Hello, I'm Lazuli, and you are? She shuts the door. Boom. I knock again without moving. No, don't do it. You can't take me. I uh, didn't do what? Whatever it is that you think. I didn't do it. Well, can't a neighbor just want to know their neighbor without accusing them? The door opens a crack. The head sort of pokes out. Uh, hi, neighbor. I work over there and live there. Door shuts again. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> uh, you, you close the door again. Makes it harder to talk. It opens just a crack. You can see the eyeballs peering out from within. The small figure looks very concerned. I'm sorry. I, I, I bend down and I'm like, why are you so scared? I don't want to get in trouble. I just got bored. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Do what? You live down there, right? Yeah. We're the cobblers. Uh -huh. I'm not supposed to break into people's houses. I'm sorry. I won't do you it again. Into our house. Why'd you do that? I got bored. <laughs> I, I whisper. You did a really nice job with the shoes and the cleaning, but you missed the spot. <laughs> <laughs> the and door from opens. like six feet away, Boldar is like, "Wait, you can talk to the squirrels too, Pebble." <laughs> the door opens a little bit more and the small gnome inside smiles. Thank you. It was fun. If if, if you're bored, we're we're neighbors. We're happy to give you somewhere to clean and cook. If if that could be of service to you from us. Well, cooking's not very much fun. I just got hungry. I don't eat very yeah. much. Look at me. I'm I'm very small. I just needed a few cookies to get through the night. You did use my dark chocolate, which did make me kind of sad. The door shuts partially again. Not all the way, but a little bit. But it was nice to have all those shoes repaired so that we could spend our day getting to know our neighbor. Really? And the door opens fully and out steps um, a small forest gnome. Do you like repairing shoes? I like working with my hands. Well, we have been looking for some help. And 
if you wanted to repair shoes, we would let you come over in the middle of the night and clean. Clean? I mean, that seems to be what you like doing, right? Well, I just, it's hard to work when everything's everywhere else. It needs to be in the right spot. Oh, so you just like repairing shoes? I like working with my hands. Yeah. Shoes? Tools? Doors? Carvings? Just well, nothing administrative. Okay? Of course not. I don't not. want to be the collector of the acorns. And An artist like you doing administrative work? <laughs> Laughable. Laughable. Nothing that makes me study. No. Nope. Not, not a study in the house. No teachers? Nope. I'm like behind them, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> hey, who's your friend, Lizuli? They sound awesome. Hi, I'm Bodara, and your my arm just kind of like comes in like right over your shoulder and neck. <laughs> the, the, the forest gnome, I said like five squirrels high, so she must be maybe like two feet on a good day if her hair is sticking up. So she's just <laughs> tiny compared to the rest of you, uh, but she'll stick out her tiny little forest gnome hand and say, hi. I'm Proton. It's nice to meet you. Proton? What a what a unique name. What, where, where does it come from? It comes from the forest. Wow. I, my parents are we're, we're forest gnomes. You must be dwarves. Mm -hmm. We are. Oh. Well, where are, are you your parents? Where are your parents? Her furrows her face. I don't want to talk about it. I'm sorry. Our parents died in the plague. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awful. Oh. Mm -hmm. It has been awful. It's why it was such a comforting sight to come to the shop this morning and see the shoes repaired less, just like they used to. It really made me feel good. So thank you for that, Proton. Yeah, and the cookies in the oven were pretty good not yeah, they, moms, they were, but pretty they, good yeah they were pretty good you're not mad not me we were mm. surprised that's all i'm not gonna get in trouble no no nah. you're not gonna send me home don't no. you live here yeah well, I do that would be here. pretty ineffective, though, wouldn't it? Yes, <laughs> You're it would. You're funny, Proton. You're a funny little forest gnome. <laughs> <laughs> so what would, you know, what would make you come back and do this again? Seemed like you enjoyed it, and we enjoyed it. I mean, we would let you come back again, if that's ah. what you wanted, as a favor. And that's my sisters. You want to grab a drink anytime. Just come by and knock, ask for a Boldara. We could go out, hit the town. Uh, <laughs> most places. Yeah, but let me know. Uh, I don't know about that. I'm still kind of shy. I don't know any of the other people here, but if it's not imposing. I'll you. Come out with the girls. We have a great time. Don't worry about that. They're going to love you, Forrest. I mean, Proton. I mean, we got to get you a nickname. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Well, we're going to need more shoes for you to fix, so we're going to have to go deliver all the shoes you fixed uh -huh. and let people know that we need more. You'd do that for me? I would do that for you, my oh new my friend. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. What what can I do for you? Well, I eat that out of the shoes. I mean, it's... Just keep doing what you did. It was great. Right? You're not, just, you're not mad that an... I took all your toys away? I thought you'd be mad. You you mean the 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 shoes that were needed to be fixed? Those were the toys? Uh-huh. You know, we love sharing. And that that fills our heart. Having a new friend, for now at least, that's enough. Yeah, and I hate fixing shoes, so that's awesome if you like it. Really? You don't like doing it? I mean, I like oh, the uh... hammering and the smashing and the making the leather soft, but I love fiddly tiny stuff, but no go. I kind of like the assembly. I'd be curious to see you do it. Show each other how we do it. 
We have, you know, you have some more. I, I can come by. We'll find some. <laughs> Maybe not in the middle of the night. Yeah, it can come during the day too. She looks to uh, to the, the face of the party. Is that okay? Let's do it on a trial basis and see how it goes. Okay. What What are your names? You're You're, you're Baldora. I know that one. I can hear it I'm down the Lasley. street. Lasley. And Pebble. I have a cousin named Pebble. Really? Uh huh. Do we yep. look alike? No. No. Uh, <laughs> Does she do marsh? His beard's not as big as yours. <gasps> it's like the best compliment I've gotten all week by a lot. What a flatterer. I'm beaming. I'm like... <laughs> well, if you've been up all night, Proton, we mm -hmm. should let you rest. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do some delivering and some marketing, and we'll let you know when we have more shoes. Okay, well... I live here. This is my home. This is where you can find me. And a lovely home it is. Thank you. Would you like to come inside? Oh, probably too big to fit inside. I'll just put my like eyes down to the door and be like, so lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, you big people, ha have a nice day. What does it look like inside? The they home? called us big people. Uh, well, it's fairly sparse. Um, you can see that it's clearly in progress. There's all these. Uh, like chisels and hammers that are being used to like slowly carve the the trunk of the tree into a, a domestic living situation. Um, there's also some little bits of like iron working and some hinges lying around and some nails and hammers that are like well miniature sized scattered about the area. Um, there's one chair that's been carved or is like half carved into the ground or I should say the it, the room was carved around the chair so that the chair is still part of the the base of the tree. Um, and it That's looks cool. like there might be a staircase leading up, but you just can't get your head in enough to see. Cool. Who's the shortest of us three? Like, I, I know that oh, Baldara is the biggest. Oh, okay, I'm the smallest. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, aren't you like four foot two or something? Didn't I read that in the description? Yeah, I'm like really short. <laughs> but what are you, 45? You still got some growing to do, sis. Don't take it too hard. <laughs> yeah, that and the beard. All right, I bid Proton farewell. And then as we regroup, I'm like, I've got to do shoe deliveries today. Oh my God, I thought we'd get a little bit of a day off since they cleaned up. Yeah, okay, sis. Yeah, let's, let's get it done. Let's do the delivery. What if what if we, we combo it with the cookies? We like give them a shoe and a cookie. Then they know like that would be a return. Those are some good cookies. And we know the bakery next door does not sell cookies conveniently enough. <laughs> Do we got an angle? How many cookies are there left? I don't How know. How many pairs of shoes? I only ate one. <laughs> yeah, but you're only one of three sisters. <laughs> I didn't eat any because I thought they were poison. Baldara. She's currently eating a cookie. Lizuli yeah. is currently eating a cookie. I didn't need that name. <laughs> that's that's walnuts. That's like acorns. It was for the, the squirrel channeling. All right, I ate some cookies. Uh, roll me 2d6 for the remaining number of cookies. Who, Jen. Me? Jen, yes. The cookie Let's go. Oh, oh, yes. That's Nine enough. Nine cookies. That's enough for each pair of shoes that you have to return. Yes. We have nine pairs of shoes. Ugh. Yeah. What's the name of our cobbler shop? Oh, good question. Uh, that is up to you. Uh, what would we're you? all named after rocks. Yeah. So, and our, our maybe family it's called name? the quarry. Oh. Or like good. something cute with shoes and quarry. Yeah. And what's our family name again? It's cobble. Oh, yeah. Uh, you uh, Cobble you, feet. Couple feet. It's in our blood. Couple feet quarry. Three generations. The, the couple, of the our couple long feet quarry. Yeah. Couple history. feet. The couple feet quarry. Sure. Cool. That's perfect. Cute. And then our slogan is like, our quarry is shoes. Get it? Because, like, quarry. <laughs> like. 
But when the other cobblers shit talk us, they go, nobody likes rocks in their shoes. No, that's too good. I hate it. That's so mean. <laughs> no, <laughs> Fucking, it's hard out there. <laughs> also, I'm calling the forest or uh, pro Tony. Um, <laughs> You're just becoming more and There's more Italian sounding as you know. go. Just returning <laughs> further east. <laughs> okay, let's do the shoe delivery with cookies. It's yeah. a new new special. It's the cookie it, see, cookie see, shoe. It's a it's like so it's a it's a favorite customer special, like a a regulars special. Mm, mm -hmm. That's why you're the face. So is this just, you know, here's a sh here's your shoes back and here's a cookie for your troubles because we like you so much? Or is there... It's a whole thing. It's like, tell troubles, us the whole we're thing. Early. Yeah, there's no, no troubles. There were no troubles. This was... We just thought you might like your shoes ahead of schedule. And because you're such a valued, repeat, favored customer, we also brought these cookies with our compliments. What do you do that mm. with words, sis? You're so smart. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, house to house, you can do. For now, all of your customers are pretty nearby, so it only takes an hour or so with a little bit of chatter here and there to return the nine pairs and a cookie to each household. Um, and then we find ourselves back at our workshop. Unfortunately. As we begin to return to the workshop, we see that out in front of it are those good old friends. Uh -oh. um, yeah. Pad, those, Barbara, uh, and Quincy? Uh, that's the good friends. But we, uh -huh. we just got paid, right? We have lots of money now? Yes, you have been paid. You have um, you have the, the two GP that you need to pay for your... Actually, you have a little bit more than that. You have... Um, how much Nothing money we so got, Neil? Did we not ask this question earlier? Nine pairs of shoes, that's gotta be what, 30 GP? <laughs> Absolutely not. It's three <laughs> silver to repair a shoe, to repair these shoes um, on average. <laughs> so you're coming out with 27 silver and you owe uh, 20 silver as you're it's walking down the street. I see them in front of our store and I'm like, oh my gosh, so glad you came back. We hey, just... we talked to all of your neighbors and nobody saw a damn thing. Yeah, I know, right? Nobody looks at shit. It's getting so tough out here in these streets, honestly. And I take the two gold and I put it in um, Pad's hand and I pat it and I'm like, you just, you all be safe out there. It is, it is rough. Here in the beginning of time, it's rough. Yeah, it's a hard life. Hey, how'd yeah, you get this money already? We work very hard. <laughs> That's a good one. You keep going with those jokes. All right. We'll see you in a week. Ta ta. Why are they laughing? They will turn around and head the other way. We need more I, shoes. I glare at them as they leave. Drink, drinks later? <laughs> Tomorrow. Oh, I dang it. I meant to say that as we do the cookies, I also asked them if they have like other shoes they wanted us to take now since we're here. Yes, that would have been a wise thing. That that is a wise thing to say, to ask for. Um Well, give me a persuasion check to see if you can milk any additional money uh what? sales work out of them. Oh my god, another high roll today. We got so Very good rolls. Mm -hmm. You're so kind of Who is this? Is this Anna when, when you make me the, <laughs> the compulsive face. liar, I and all I do is talk. The compulsive no. liar? No. Well, gun to her saying, head, Neil. When you, the universe, gives me a role like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it works. Um, out of the nine people who you were returning things to, six of them have more work for you to do. And they're surprised to see that stuff comes in on time. And yeah, you know what? Little Timmy Sandals, 
ruined. I got this pair of work boots. Totally need repairs. Uh, you know, here are these uh, mountain climbing shoes that my friends and I had just bought from the cobblers down the street, and these spikes are falling out already. Could you get these patched up so we can try out these crazy mountain climbing shoes? Yeah, you don't want cut-rate cobbling. You really just don't. Hmm. And well. little Timmy. Always little Timmy, you know? It's always, it's always something with little Timmy. It certainly is, yes. Uh, um, and I will also mention to them, like, you know, I'll try to work into the conversation about how, like, if any of their friends, any of those rock climbing friends are also having trouble with their shoes, like, bring them on over, you know? You give them a discount stuff. code? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just mention hashtag gobble feet. Save you up to two copper on your... <laughs> All right. I mean, with a bit of luck, you might get a cookie, so... Uh, they also mm -hmm. appreciate the door-to-door -door service, you know? Normally, you bring in... You, you go out to get your shoes taken care of, and then you, you go out to pick them up. Having someone bring them to your house? Well, oh, that's a nice mm -hmm. touch. Nice touch. And I do want to point out that Boldara does this by picking up, like, the, the wooden shoe rack that they sit on in the display <laughs> area and, like, two leather straps over. And so, like, she really does not enjoy the process of delivery because she's just taking, like, a and, like, a fold-in mirror and, like, a bench so they can check them <laughs> each place. All right. And nobody's tipping. No, absolutely not. Rude. So how do we usually get to work? People just stop by and bring shoes? Yeah. In the olden mm -hmm. days, back when your parents were around, you know, weeks ago, um, people would come and they would place orders for new things. They would say, like, I need a new pair of boots. Um, I need a, you know, I'm going out to a, a, a ball. I need a pair of shoes that will match my outfit, that sort of thing. And you would have stuff on hand. And you actually still do have some stock on hand from the olden days. Uh, and you could sell them something that would fit them, or if they needed a custom fit, you could, you know, take a... What's it called again? I've already forgotten its name. You could take a last of their foot and then, you know, work a shoe for that purpose. And these days, you're not really getting any new sales, and your your stockpile of things is really down to those odd sizes that don't come... that people don't need to buy very often. Um, and so it's mostly folks who are just coming by for, oh, I need this fixed any old cobbler can fix a shoe that's already been made. So let's just go to the person nearest to us. The amount of last puns in my chat are gorgeous. <clears throat> One of my faves was Trader Jody that said, don't stretch it out because that would make it last longer. <laughs> nice, nice, very that's nice. Really good. Really good. <laughs> Okay. Some Last of Us jokes, you know, Ooh. good stuff. Okay. Well, um... Party can head back with the work. Back to the their own place. You're done for the day, essentially. Hmm. What is the, the order of business? Is it taking your time and relaxing? Is it finding out who's been spreading these nasty rumors? Is it figuring out once and for all who ransacked your shop and told you to get out of the business? Um, is it letting bygones be bygones? And, and what is whatnot? the washing up situation like in this era and household? Well, you can tell me about the household, but I can tell you about the era. Uh, you'll go to a well with a bucket and you'll fill it up with mm. water. Um, you might wash at a fountain nearby because there'll be like a fountain and then it'll drain down into a sewage system. So you could like do your washing at the fountain or you and could- And is that a popular option? Like Among some folks, it is a popular option, especially if it's something simple. Like I just need to wash my hands and my face. Ah. That's a common thing. Some folks might. You were about to make a fool of me, Neil. <laughs> Some folks <laughs> no, might. Skipping the fountain option. Just taking a nice at home bucket shower in our back patch of dirt. Thanks. That's what most people will do. They will bring their water home and in a bathtub or in a large bucket or something, a large barrel, they'll make multiple trips with buckets until they fill it up. And then the family will take turns bathing in this large bucket. Uh, the smallest children go last, which is why you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater because it gets really gross by the time you're bathing the children. 
and uh, then you drain it down out into the streets or out into a yard or something. It gives you mm. privacy, but then you do have to make a lot of trips to the fountain and back. I feel like that would be Boldara's job anyway, but I also feel like immediately upon completing it and getting the water just the right temperature, it would be expected that Lizuli would be able to just kind of pop in there and uh, charisma me out of that early shower. So mm-hmm. I am going to sneak some extra like dunks over my head throughout. But mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going to fill up that bathtub for everybody. Excellent. I don't know. I don't mean to assume that about Lazuli. I'm just, those are my sisterly expectations kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> Why, do you wash up? Why do you want to wash up so bad? Oh, because I was carrying the shoe rack around. I was so stinky. Mm. Yeah. Unlike real life, Rachel, Boldara really wants to shower all the time. <laughs> I don't know. What are we doing? Therapy? I don't know how to answer this. I want to shower. <laughs> we play the characters we wish we were. I yeah. get it. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, uh, you you start gathering water for all of your, your stuff. Uh, it looks like Pebble can go about keeping books and making track, and you know, there's still that money missing. Um, but don't worry about it too closely here. <clears throat> um, what do you guys? I, what's the plan? I ask Boldara, how long has it been since they kicked you out of the ram spiral? <laughs> I kind of set the bucket down. I'm like, sis, which time are you talking about? Are you talking about the most recent thing? Or are you talking about that like soft hold they had on me over the summer? I mean, like, could we go tonight? I mean, like, metaphysically, yeah, we could <laughs> be present in that space. I, 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 I you know, you kind of been feel... on fire lately today. I feel like we could go anywhere. Let's go, Azuli. Yeah, let's go out, hit the town, ask around, um, figure out, you know, who's who in the cobbler world, see if we can figure out who's been nagging us, you know? Mm-hmm. Because somebody has been spreading petty rumors about mm-hmm. us. Wait. Maybe I should bring my investigation hat to the bar. <laughs> you should. You definitely should. <laughs> then was... I will, because it was definitely what made us find this new friend today. Hmm. What's her face? Poppy. Proton. Pro- Proton. 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 Proton? <laughs> yes 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 okay all right let's let's get ready it makes sense we should all take a bath and then i'll put on my hat yes 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 it's a montage <laughs> getting ready for the net out <laughs> cleaning my pits washing my beard combing my hair out <laughs> All right, the party gets ready to go out that evening. Um, and it's going to be over to the Ram Spiral right next door. Uh, and it, the way that we've described this is that it's just you, Boldara, that's been kicked out, not your siblings, right? Oh, yeah. Ah. Yeah, yeah, no, that I imagine should they go through the door ahead of me, it's going to be two rousing cheers of welcome for the beloved Cobblefeet sister. And then, like, utter silence when i walk through the door mm. i feel like i might not have been that often i'm basically the sidekick here like people kind of forget i'm here but because i'm with the face uh you know I they, they know like, hey! she, com- she comes with What's some what? people you know so, yeah, What's I'm just up? Behind. oh my gosh been too long bitches what's up oh come on in Leslie. oh hey you brought your sister with you come here pebble hey you. Uh, c- come on, guys. Don't make it weird. Just. I I put my arm around them. I'm like, I, I know, right? <laughs> like this one, right? Did you know, know what she did? Did you hear about what she brought into the shop? <laughs> Was it the ass thing again? Such a thing for ass is this one. <laughs> you. I'm gonna hold you accountable for her. All yeah. right. If if she makes a mess again. You know how long it, it took to get the smell out? If she makes a mess, it's on you this time. Is it? That is, is a it? delicacy in some countries. I mean, this is look, not that country. Who are you to kink shame, really? Though. Delicious, is it sexual? Honestly. In nature? 
with I'm, some salt. I, look, I wouldn't know, but y you're kind of yucking her yum. I yes. don't know what those old boomer words are, please. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Listen. The, uh, wow, the... you're calling me old? Uh, you're wow, like 60 we or something, right? Oh, you're ancient. We were better friends than this. I thought we were better friends than this. I Which... thought we had something. You've been here twice my age. You're more than twice my age. <sighs> Saving you. <laughs> Look, I'm look like, I just okay. Just you can all come in. I'm busy. I gotta go. I gotta go bust these dishes. Just keep an eye on her, okay? Mm, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Don't look at me like that. She's a troublemaker. I mean, is she the problem? Pronounced shoe. <laughs> it's great to see you, Laz. <laughs> I'm gonna go. You too. Boop. I'm the shoe. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh yeah, yeah. Bye, Pebble. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sis. Of course. Um, is there anyone in the bar that we know and or that is known to be like someone who knows what's up in the town? Yes, absolutely. Um, let me just get my ass out here. Yes. Yes, there is. Um, there's a, a regular around here, um, a fellow bard who make, takes their, their time and effort just walking through the city streets, getting to know everybody, he likes to make songs up of people for a penny or two at a time, you know, just a, a quick little ditty. Or you want a good song, they'll write up something great and perform it at a birthday or whatnot. But they're sort of the, the social bard whose job it is to, to befriend everyone so they can sell their music. Um, mm. Their name is Roy Boy. <gasps> Roy Boy! Mm, mwah, mwah, two oh. kisses. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. So good That's to see you. So good to see you. How's business? Uh, well, I would say none of yours, but your nose is up in everyone's <laughs> business, isn't it? <laughs> uh, <got me. laughs> we, we need to do that collab. We've been talking about this collab forever. And we just haven't gotten around to oh, it. Oh my God. I know, right? Like, with your. With your zither, zither. I, I know what it, I know what it is. Okay, with your zither and my voice, we can make music. Okay, right, right. Mm -hmm. So Fantastic. like next week or something. Totally, totally. Yeah, just I'll I'll, I'll send my people to talk to your people. <clears throat> of course. Yeah, I'm just like really busy this week because someone um is threatening my family and business. Oh my god! Every so, week it's no something, right? Deal. Like I know, right? It's the cop the the cobbler community. It's toxic. Oof. Man, you should hear about what's been going on on the other side of town, though, with those cobblers. It's real nasty over there. Bunch of people trying to form a guild. They wanted me to come up with a song for, like, the Guild of Cobblers. It's a terrible name, by the way. They're still, I'm, I'm trying to get them to workshop it, but they the can't. Doc? <laughs> they're the, doing a guild? Right? Yeah, they're trying to do a guild, whatever the hell that is. And they're calling it the Guild of Cobblers. It's a terrible name. I'm trying to offer my services as a wordsmith to, like, help them, you know, promote the their their organization and let me maybe come up with some better branding. But really they just want a jingle and I've been struggling because like the Guild of Cobblers. So how do you jingle that? Gold on shoes? Like... That's their plan is that they're gonna have a big <laughs> golden shoe out front. It's gonna be the gilded shoe, the guild of cobblers. It's Wow. I don't understand so on the any nose. of this. So on the I don't nose. get it. I, they said that they're going to try and go for that noble market just by slapping gold. Like, you can't just gild things to make them fancy, all right? That's tacky. That's so no tacky. No yeah. subtlety. Um, weird. Who's, like, who's heading that up? <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? It's Francesca. Ugh, Frankie? Mm-hmm. I, 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 you know she doesn't like being called that, okay? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, I, since I'm working for her for now, it's Francesca. Actually, it's Mrs. Francesca. Mrs. Oh, you didn't hear? No. Oh, yeah, it's Mrs. Francesca now. Mm-hmm. 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 Wow. Yeah. yeah, she married the blacksmith's daughter in a huge wedding, and oh. everything was made out of... <laughs> You're clipping. I can't hear you. You're just yelling. <laughs> yes. 
I wasn't. I I forgot. You, <laughs> two of them, right? I so so many faces. Uh, yes, yes. Um. Anyway, I'm comforting. <laughs> I'm comforting Boldara. Just they're there. Did you go there. Did you never mind. That was very fast. That was very fast. Well, he looks over at Boldara. Um, they said it was love at first sight, and that <laughs> they saw each other across the Cover room. Her ears. Shh. And. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I tried to get the wedding gig, couldn't get it. Got beaten out. By who? Ugh. I don't even want to say it. Guy. Guy! Yeah. Ew, no, no, that sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. He's really good, though. I mean, at least, like, Pretty let's good. be honest. At least it's not like... I don't know. Yeah. It could be worse. It could be that that Adia character is terrible. She's just an awful singer. <laughs> yeah, she sucks. It's terrible. <laughs> to be compared to her would be devastating. Yeah, seriously. I know. Ugh. Ugh. What's um, up, Pebble? Hey, nice to see you. Yeah, it's really nice to see you. Remember my name? That's uh. Yeah, that's nice. yeah. It's like the, the little thing that gets in your shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just just like that. No, because you you worked you fixed my shoes that one time. Yeah, I did. I yeah, did. did yeah. You, you, did, you got in there and you just like a pebble. Did you enjoy the results? Was it okay? Yeah, it was fine. Good. I was I was still think I you know sometimes I really question myself about you know my skills are they good enough did I do the shoe right I sometimes I can't sleep. Think about the shoes I fixed that day. Thinking, oh, yeah, the right yeah, uh huh. Mm hmm. You, you gonna be all right there, Boldera? She, she said she would. Really metal held in shape forever. And look at you. <laughs> you know, later you're gonna have to tell me more about this because I didn't get to write the vows or the, you know do the songs. Might be nice to have some ammunition in my back pocket if I ever need it, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. totally. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you right what she just... Tell me. Tell, <laughs> tell Roy big Boy. Big secret. Yeah, their big secret. <laughs> Roy said she's perfect, man. She's literally perfect, and I love it, and she's rich, rich. That's good. All right. Well, hey, um... I hear they're doing some axe throwing outside. No, oh, bro. Wait, wait. wait. Oh, Just, yeah. Right, go out the front door. Take a, take a right. Someone's setting up some targets that might make you feel good. You know. Roldar is actually gone from this conversation. <laughs> Suzu, Sorry. Suzu, ask him about the the pity rumors. He must know. The the what rumors? The rumors about us. Oh, um, so the the guild they didn't invite us. Um, is something going, like, do we need to know something? Is there something being said? Well, I mean, you've got ears. You, you talk to people. You, I'm sure you know what's up, right? I want to hear it from someone that I can trust. You know, I I want that no bullshit. No, like, you know, I, that, that I trust no bullshit? You. Yeah, you're always yes, looking for yes. that, that high class clientele. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... That's a really good store name. No bullshit. No mm -hmm. bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's pretty mm -hmm. good. Ooh, that is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <clears throat> Claimed it, dibs. Whatever. I don't I don't deal with that. I, I, I live in the moment. I'm never going to have a storefront. You'll always know where you can find Roy Boy. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be on everyone's lips. You'll find me. I don't need to set up a shop. But what they're saying about the three of you which I'm so sorry to uh, have to relay to you, is that they're saying uh, little orphan Annie can't mend a shoe. Little orphan Annie ain't good for you. And uh, the three of you are the orphan Annie are, they're talking are about. Are the orphan Annie? That's like yeah. really unoriginal. Sorry, the world's only like 600 years old. What are you going to do? Yeah. Everything's yeah. new under the sun. I should have so figured it out. So they're just saying we're bad at our jobs is what they're saying. That was only the first verse. I'll spare you the rest. It gets gross. Uh, but essentially, the, the you can't repair anything. 
and um, your parents had the talent. Uh, they're saying that all you do is talk and gossip, and you yourself don't actually have any talent other than what you put on your face in the morning. Wow. They're saying your sister... This one might not be too far off, but your sister's got muscles for brains. Um, and... <laughs> I'm outside. Uh, and she should work more as a model for stone sculptures than actually as a, uh, a craftsman. Um, I mean, that's really just a compliment. But whatever. It is a compliment. Actually, when you really think about it, it's a compliment, but um, it doesn't. it's not great for business. Uh, uh, um, and Pebble... Um, I don't see anything about me, isn't it? They didn't give you a verse. I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> <sighs> um, of course, of course. Mm. Wow, that sounds but like they did a say lot the three jealousy. sisters, the three Annie orphans. God, that's so much more savage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I hear people calling me. I think I got to go make a buck. Uh, if you're around, buy me a drink, or I'll, I'll get you one. Sounds good. All Always. right. Love you, Lazzy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Roy Boy will go off and make some money singing some songs. Uh, I can't you believe. You are so mean. I can't believe they're doing a guild without us. Like, I would understand if they did one without me, but I figured they would at least have asked you. Whatever. We don't need a guild. We don't want to be holding to their, like, dues and stuff. We're just going to build our business to be better. And now we have a secret weapon because Proton is super skilled and super fast. And I can focus on marketing, which is the most important thing anyway, let's be honest. And we can do, okay, okay. Here's the inspiration. Are you ready? It's coming to me. It's coming to me. This delivery service. No one's doing this. No one's ever done this. It's our thing. Okay. We're going to be doing, we're, we're, we're cobblers with delivery no one else does it we're gonna come up with a song we're gonna spread it around it's gonna make fun of the annie song and we're gonna have a launch party a launch party where i will play my zither and everyone will see what a stupid thing it is to say that i have no talent you should get some shoes for the launch party i suppose yeah cobbling would probably be like a good thing to do yeah. You can handle that part. I wonder if if somehow we could get our new friend Pepperoni um, <laughs> <laughs> to to create new shoes, not just repair shoes. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Idea, inspiration, light bulb or lightning bolt because light bulbs probably don't exist. Um <clears throat> We start a rumor that the new fashion is shoes with with it's coming, it's coming. Bells, bells, shoes with bells. <gasps> That's it. That's it. And we are the only shop that makes bells that have Magical properties. Wait, are you able to do that? It's not so much like something you prove, it's something you feel. You know, okay. like you have to be in tune with the energy of it. Mm, it's more of an energetic with, flow. With energy bells. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> and yeah. it's one of those things that like, you have to wear it to feel it. And if you don't feel it, then it's you that's not open. Mm. That makes a lot of sense, I guess. They're crystal bells, is what they are. Mm -mm -mm. Wouldn't that break easily? So it's come back and get them repaired. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Are we stopping the show? Are you the brains of this operation? <laughs> I'm outside throwing ashes, but I'm in on this. <laughs> um, okay, okay. But... But shouldn't we find who is spreading the rumors? 
Mm. Maybe we don't care. But Wait, we should find actually, who ransacked our shop at least. Above game, was it the blacksmith's daughter or Francesca that was the ex-girlfriend? Oh, uh, Bethany, uh, the, uh, the, the, blacksmith the, the partner of the uh, Francesca. Yes. Okay, okay. Chat was asking. I was Oh, on. yeah, sorry, chat, yeah. We'll get into it later, I'm sure. Bethany, Bethany. Bethany. Um, I don't know, seems like something Francesca would do. I'm comfortable just blaming her. But but we do have the shoe that they left <clears throat> behind, right? Oh my gosh! You're Shouldn't so we right. like track it down to like the creator? <gasps> we can have Proton look at it and tell us what kind of cobbling style was used. Maybe that can lead us to the shop. Wait, did we even inspect the shoe? Sure. It was done very did well. It... Excellent craftsmanship. Is there like a tag on it with the name of his shop? No, 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 no. Okay. There is no evidence <laughs> left that could be mis that would have been direct. You know, there's nothing that the cops could have used to track it back to someone. It was just a fixed shoe in a cobbler shop. Who would believe that uh. that was a calling card, right? It was. Yeah. Do we know which customer it belonged to? You do. Mm hmm. The other shoe was completely Ooh. ruined, like destroyed, and mm -hmm. you had to pay out of pocket to like, sorry, yeah. we ruined your shoes. Here's the price of a new pair of boots. And that wasn't a name of relevance or that we feel is at all connected. Um, the individual customer, I can give you their name here in my notes, um, was Barana. Uh, she's a half elf who lives down the block. Actually, she lives a couple blocks away. Arana. Um, and she's like a, a, what would you call it? Like a huntress? Um, not quite a huntress, but like a, a ranger, a forest hunter-gatherer combo. Goes out, finds herbs, berries, what's not, brings them back into the city, has her family sell them. So she always needs a good pair of hiking boots and then like a backup pair of hiking boots in case something happens. This was the backup pair. Backup boots. Backup boots, but important to have. That she was switching out, you know, she was, I'm going to start yeah. using. Yeah, yeah. Um, you actually haven't seen mm. her since then. She did not come by ah. to replace her boots at your store. That's a lost customer. And but we saw her to reimburse, right? Or do we just like drop that off? Yeah, you you have already reimbursed, which is why we're in debt. And the the fixed boot was it the left shoe or the right shoe? And do it was we the still left. have it? You do. Left. We still have left shoe. Was it bought from us or from another store? It is a shoe that your parents had made once upon a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh. <laughs> It would be interesting to go see her to find out if, like, who, who's, who's our new cobbler? Hmm. Because maybe, maybe they plan, they, they did this to drive her away from us, and they got her as a customer now. You think it might be a local person, like someone in your immediate vicinity, like? that might be picking off your local clientele? Maybe. Why not? Well, I mean... If they they can start a guild without us, they sure can steal mm -hmm. our customers, too. Mm -hmm. The guild's on the other side of town, from what it sounds like. Wow. There, there are cobblers sort of spread out throughout the city. There's a bunch of them, because, you know, it's a, a big city. There's a lot of shoes to go around. Um, so, do you have any thoughts on whether it's a a local person who's trying to claim local territory or if this is some sort of the guild or some other entity out there who's trying to suppress cobblers across the the city do you have any thoughts on <clears throat> what the the motivation might be for this are you the target specifically or are you just a convenient Ooh. target yeah i should have thought of that indeed maybe other stores got broken in and left a shoe behind mm. We should ask the other cobblers around. Yeah. Yeah. We should go talk to the nearby cobblers. But maybe, maybe there's a way to discuss it. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, I have Because, like, they could have self. done it, but they. Ooh, I like your style. Yes. I'll go as someone else. 
Who they be? I heard this happened to the Cobblerfoot Quarry. Did anything like that happen to you? And see if they smart. Yeah, because also they might have been the ones that did it to us, yeah. or the same thing happened to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you should suss that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could probably come with you. I bet they won't even know. You know, <laughs> when at this point, I could put on a different hat. You just wear like a low brim hat. Mm, you probably um. wouldn't recognize me. Let's be honest. But you could go alone. Like, you never know. What if somebody picked up on me? Nope. Didn't pick up on you. <laughs> Probably uh, not. No. So it lasts for an hour. Yeah. I mean, it's still, like, the middle of the day, right? I could go do that. Yeah. You want to head on down to the next cobbler shop down the road? It's at Sammy's Shoe Shop is the next one down. How, how's our relationship with Sammy? Not bad. Um, again, most of your contacts and relationships are through your parents. Sammy knew your folks. You are the closest shops to one another, but everyone was on good terms. You'd like meet each other at the cloth, the, the place that they sell clothes cloth bolts or you know the place where they sell leather and you they, they had a friendly relationship um there wasn't very much poaching of clientele but also no one got together for like dinner or anything it was just sort of professional courtesy yeah. i will disguise myself as like the most average customer of a cobbler shop i can think of not too rich looking not too poor looking not too tall not too short Mm -hmm. And I'll go in being basically like, the brown hair, brown eye guys from earlier. <laughs> exactly who I tried to describe. Yes, but a dwarf still. Yes. Right. Okay. I, well, I mean, you can see I one foot shorter or taller, and you can appear yeah. thin, fatter in between. So you're already on like five. I guess. What's your height? This is probably important to figure out now. Uh, I don't have any notes on my character sheet. Did you prescribe mm -hmm. me a height? I did not. You are free to pick. Anywhere between me and Boulderina. Mm-hmm. How I'm tall five, are you, five. You're 5'5". Five, five. I'm probably like five feet tall. Okay, so I guess you could appear human then if you wanted. Or half-elf yeah. or something like that. I'll, I'll appear <clears> half-elf. <throat> Unless that that's not, like, that's common here, right? Yeah, there's a bunch of half-elves cruising around. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Um, and I'm looking for like a pair of work shoes, you know, just mm -hmm. like a boring pair of shoes, but nothing I find is actually going to be what I need for various reasons. I'm just mm -hmm. using that as like a, an opener to why I'm here. And then I'll say like, I was looking at Cobblerfoot quarry, but did you hear they got broken into? Isn't right. that horrible? Yeah. And see how people react. Mm. Well, you head on to Sammy's shoe shop. You start perusing, looking for what type of shoe did you say? Work shoes. Work shoes. Right, right. Well, what do you do? Oh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Walking around know. the city or out in the woods? Uh, city. Well, I've got but this sometimes nice. sometimes the woods, you know? He like puts a loafer away. Okay. <clears throat> uh, walks over to this, you know, pulls out another thing, offers it to you, goes around a few times, kind of checking out different styles. When you mention the cobbler foot quarry, cobbler feet quarry, was it foot cobbler, or feet? Cobbler foot, because that's well, our last name, right? Cobble feet quarry. Cobble feet. Okay, cobble feet quarry. Feet quarry, excellent. <clears throat> Sammy goes, yeah, I heard their shop got ransacked a little while back. It's pretty bad. Where'd you hear that? Um, well, probably from someone just like you. Hmm. I don't remember in particular. Yeah, pretty horrible, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You Has know? that happened to many shops around here? Shake their head. No, I mean, not really. Every now and then there's some a break-in or a burglary somewhere, but I can't think of any other recent ones. Seems like you that know? was really pointed. Like someone really has it out for them, huh? He puts down, he like holds the shoe in the air. What do you mean? I thought it was just a, a random act of violence. Like a, they left their door unlocked and someone came through the stuff. It, it, I got the impression there was something threatening about it. I don't know. <clears throat> really? Who would threaten a pair of a group of orphans? That's what I wondered. 
Well, that's terrible. Yeah, it that's is. That's downright despicable. Someone should it do is. something about that. Like what? I don't know. Someone should. Yeah. You know, someone like you, like a neighbor, a cobbler neighbor, should do something about that. I should go check on them, see if they're okay. I just thought that they would have been broken into for, you know, like a regular purpose. Yeah, you know, just a regular horrible break-in. Yeah, just like they're, they're steal money, not like someone has something. But those poor kids. What are the yeah, two, I mean, three just, of them going to do? You know, a regular, regular break-in where they steal all the orphans' money. Yeah, totally fine. I didn't anyway, mean it like I have that. places to be, but thank you. Oh, no, and please, please. I've got plenty of good shoot. <laughs> okay. I go to the next shop out and mm. do the same routine. Oh, uh, yeah. The Temple of Shoes. The Temple of Shoes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ostentatious. Yes. Their tagline is, find your soulmate. Ah! <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. I love puns. Mm-hmm. Um, there is the, the shopkeeper, a woman dressed in like long, uh, flowing cotton robes, like gold bracelets, uh, that kind of pin the robes to her ankles and ankle. These are called wrists. These are not your ankles, <laughs> um, that pin the robes to her wrists. Uh, and she kind of gives you a deep bow as you walk in and she shows you around the place. It doesn't have this, the soundtrack though, it has a much more solemn soundtrack. And there on these like elegantly crafted rosewood uh, display racks are shoes of every different type and make and model. And they're not really appealing to the everyday sort of workman shoes. These are more of like going out shoes. There are heels, there are flats, there are cushioned shoes. There are shoes for like old people to kind of like help keep those varicose veins in. And then there's shoes for people with wide feet. You got the whole range of things here at the Temple of Shoes. Uh, in my disguise self, can I change it as I go? You, is this? Uh, I don't. Until you use your action to dismiss it. Oh, you can't. The extent of the illusion is up to you. Hmm. Okay, never mind. I don't want to do that plan. Uh, I'll just walk in and say I'm looking for, like, the perfect shoe for an event. Mm. But the event will just keep getting more and more ridiculous. Like, we're going to take a walk in the woods, and then also it's a slumber party, but also there's a dance at the end, and um, I'm going to be on my feet for a while, but they need to look really sexy. Just, like, the shoe doesn't exist, but that's right. what I'm looking for. Right. And the woman will sort of nod and then kind of walk you over to, oh, walk in the woods. Here's this, you know, wide mm. flats on the bottom, just a little bit of tread for some good grip. And yet still the green, uh, green velvet on top is, oh, and then a slumber party? Hmm. Well, you don't need shoes for a slumber party. But they should be fleece or some, you know, something's like it could be a slipper, but it's a shoe. I know? see. Just the right see. thing. Maybe wooden bottoms with soft fleece on top and some gentle padding within. But I need to dance in them, so. Then we'll add some buckles on the top so they can be tightened yeah. down for the dancing. You know, I had I had the perfect shoe, but uh, I took it to um, what's it called? A uh, cobble feet quarry, and they don't you know they were broken into. Well, shoes are supposed to be broken in. No, 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 like the shop. Like someone went and stole my shoes from their shop. Stole all their money, too. I see. Isn't that horrible? She shrugs. We you don't think it's horrible? At, we here at the Temple of Shoes spend our time focused on our products and worry not about what happens out there. We're here to guide you to your true soulmate. Let's mm. not worry about what those people may or may not be doing or lying to you about. <clears throat> you think they'd lie to me? If you're trying to guide me toward my soulmate, I should know. 
It is a poor craftsman who blames their tools. It is a terrible craftsman who say someone broke into their shop and stole everything or broke everything and that's why they couldn't fix it for you. So you think they just they just made it up? Do you think they're do you think they're bad cobblers? I think you've come to the Temple of Shoes for one sole purpose, and that's to find the one that matches you. That's to find that peace that can only be found on the inside, that, that inner sanctuary, that inner softness. And we're here to help you find that. Tell me more about this event you're going to and when it is. I'm just, I, if they lied to me, I have to go there right now and confront them. There's just, I just, I, sh shoe finding is a sacred experience, as you said. I yes. won't stand for it. And I walk out. Before you go, can I offer you shoes to kick in their door? <laughs> I ignore that. But I mark her as suspicious. What was her name? I'm sure she introduced mm. herself. Yes, she did. Uh, her name was Sister Helen. Sister Helen. She's not as nice as I thought she would be. No, she's mm -hmm. very mean. Oh, mean, meany, meany pants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are the two closest uh, cobblers in your neighborhood. You'd have to like cross the river, which, you know, there's bridges to cross it. It's not a problem um, to go to the next neighborhood to start looking into other cobblers in those regions. I'm going to just go home and report what I heard to my sisters. And um, I think that Sammy would probably know if there had been other break-ins like ours. Mm -hmm. So I, I conclude from all of this that I think ours was a pointed experience that was specifically targeted at us. <clears throat> and also that Sister Helen sucks. Do you come back to report this at the house where we are? Mm -hmm. um, just so you know, I did not follow you. I was left outside of the bar with my sadness and my drinks <laughs> and this pile of throwing axes. And um, I think you find me much chagrined outside our own house, uh, once again, forbidden to enter the ram's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think, think I just waited for you at the ram's ass, like kind of alone. <laughs> You just no, didn't but... hear, like, the thunk. <laughs> thunk. <laughs> like, through the wall. Well, I mean, you, you said, like, I'll just go and I'll be right back. So, like, I'm waiting, you know. So oh I God. go to the house. I realize both my sisters are still at the, the Rams spiral. <laughs> and I go there instead. And I think with that, we should take our last break of the <laughs> evening. We'll come back on the other side with some more city dwarves. See you soon. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to City Dwarves. Is she doing it? She of course not. It Go oh. it. Do it! <laughs> her it. brother was reaching for her. Own. He's looking at it, too. He's like, what is... What Be is entertaining on command! Go, go chase her. Go climb the thing. You don't want to move at all. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's oh just watching. Gosh, How are we supposed to D and D through this? I... Zoom in, Jen. This is this is why this is my new background. It's, it's just like perfection. Yeah, for these moments, yeah, baby. do it. Show your strength. You might be small, but you're mighty. Rise, rise, <laughs> rise. <laughs> He's just chilling. He's purring. He's not even like. He's watching. That's the meme gen, the, the oh, one orange yeah. brain cell. Orange cats just get the one. <laughs> yeah, he does. I think he does. Oh, he's, oh. Oh, he's playing with the mic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, my cat would not be caught dead sitting in my lap that long. Like, I'm literally mm -hmm. holding him like a little. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. It's disgusting. Goals. I think, it's, I think it's the one brain cell power. It's really nice. Do you know how much <laughs> blood I've lost trying to hold my cat? <laughs> Yay. Hey, little buddy. All oh, right. You can fall asleep. Okay, we can play. Right, <laughs> fall asleep in your lap. Jeez. 
Yes. <laughs> okay, so you go back to your sisters with your findings. You've told them all about <clears throat> Sammy's Sue shoe shop, and you've told them all about Sister Helen at the Temple of Shoes. Freaking Sister Helen. She's the she worst. She sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had my suspicion. She's all like holy and whatever, but behind those holy, you know, sayings, I have an evil shoe mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. Wait, catch me up. Says Sister Helen ransacked our shop? No, she's just mean. Oh, like, maybe yeah, yeah, she did, no. but she at least didn't care that it happened and kind of said we were lying about it. She is for sure a bitch. Mm -hmm. Like, for sure, for sure. But do you think she could have done it? Nah, she so is like crap. Do I? Can I roll an insight check to see if I like got the feeling that it could have been her or whether I feel like it's just like she didn't care? Absolutely. Nine is right in that zone where like you should have some doubts of it definitely could be her. Like maybe she is has so little respect that she wants you out of the business for the sake of the business like the reputation mm. of the shoe people in the area or like she's not the sort of person who would do that even if she has no regard for who you are mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah did our parents have any enemies that we know of or like cobbler rivals no not really they were hard-working folks kind of kept their heads down made some good products they weren't um they never did a lot of marketing until um, until Lazlai came along, and then that sort of helped with the marketing in the area. But before then, it was just you make a good product, people will buy it. They'll tell their friends. Just keep your head down and do some good work, and spend your time living your life. You know, shoe making is what we do to get by. It's not who we are. Yeah. Didn't care enough to to have rivals. Mm. Okay. Mm. Let's see. Well, I've been drinking. Should we, like, still go check out the guild? You can be a good cat for, like, a second. <laughs> there you go. Your eyes, people. Oh, oh we can hear that's that. good. Such a purr. This is your stream debut. Don't mess it up. You're nailing it, Kat. You're nailing it. Mm-hmm. Oh. This is more of a, a, a hold time than I usually get. This is great. Oh, wow. <laughs> just hamming it up for the audience. I know. Look Jeez. at her. Look at her like five toes just spreading with glee. Ah, okay. <laughs> time, time. <laughs> there it goes. That's appropriate. Anyway, sorry to derail. It's fine. It's fine. So what are we going to do here? Is there anything to do? Couldn't you just live your life and not worry about these these goons busting down your doors, these uh, vile rumors that are being spread? Isn't that just an ordinary part of life? Maybe we can go drink where the guild is. They got a bar there, right? Maybe we should just go. I mean, Francesca's trying to spin up this guild, and I don't know, Bethany. Maybe we could I see we if should. stuff's happening there. We should. We should see what the vibe is over there. Let's go. Uh, Boulder is like out the door. <laughs> I'll follow. I'm down. Yeah. This is now a bar crawl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it is uh, later in the afternoon, actually stretching on towards evening. By the time you get across the city, um, it's going to be evening. And it's now we should probably check in on your finances. Because as we've mentioned before, party's a little broke. Party's oh, barely making ends meet. Pay for those drinks. Yeah. Oh, I'll get people to pay for them. Don't worry. Okay. You have, I think, seven silver to your name. That seven silver mm -hmm. that you brought in today is uh, pretty much all you're working on here. And normally at a, a nice bar, um, you know, a, a drink might be somewhere between five copper and a silver, you know? So this is a, uh, like a seven to 14 drink limit for the three of you for until, until money comes in, like done, period. You might even need groceries in the meantime, so money's a little tight. We pay for no drinks. 
Pebble, did you uh, bring those leftover cookies? We gave them all. Or, or, uh, oh, we gave them to the customer. Never mind. I thought we could trade them for drinks, but forget it. No. All right. And we will um, need to buy more mug. groceries <laughs> if we want to keep this whole like cookie thing going. Mm hmm. Well, those problems can wait till tomorrow, right? Financial decisions are always best to put off until you're done going out for the evening. Yeah. Uh, mm hmm. That makes sense. Um, you can head on over towards this up and coming. Uh, guild of the cobblers yeah there's a there's a bar that's for the guild uh well you're making your way in that direction right that's what i thought yeah we're going to a bar where we think they would hang out mm -hmm. so you, you start asking around as you get to the other side of town about this place and sure enough there is a new construction happening some old houses have been leveled. i say old you know uh, not that mm -hmm. old um have been leveled and there is a new building going up made out of stone nice big walls the ground floor is done but like the second and third and fourth story is still being constructed and there is a, a big banner hanging outside made of leather with the the words guild of the cobblers seared into it and as you come round the corner, you can see through the huge double doors atop the, the stone steps that the ground floor of the Guild of the Cobblers is a tavern. Of and course. there is a sign out front that says Guild Members Only. And hmm. inside, coming from inside, you can hear music. You, you think what? you can hear people having a good time. There's windows all along the sides. And there are people walking down the streets that are like poking their heads in through the doors or looking through the windows. You can see there's a couple of bouncers at the, the guild hall, some armed folk standing around, making sure it's guild members only. You'll have to show your guild card if you want to get into this place. Um, and yeah, you can Pebble, peer through the windows Pebble, if you wanted. Pebble, ask them how you join the guild. Okay. Are you sure you don't want to do this interaction? Because, like, sometimes when I talk to people, it gets a little, you know. I believe in you. Okay. And also, I want them not to see me yet in case I need to manipulate them later. <laughs> okay. Sure. Let's let's do your plan. Uh, so I... And I don't need a special hat. I don't need to, like, go back and... No, no. Okay, I'll just not go ask you need, my... Not unless it makes you feel better. I mean, I do have my my staff that looks like a dragon. This should be enough of a talking piece to, mm -hmm. you know, stir up conversation with people I don't know. Uh, so maybe, I, don't, I, maybe maybe don't lead with the staff. Just are you sure? Because sometimes, like some people are really into, you know, like when I show it like this. Are you talking about the duck stick again? <laughs> no, you're looking at it from the wrong angle. I'm talking about the. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I'll just go. I'll do my thing. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I got this. I'll do my very best. So I like try to confidently walk to the to the door. Mm hmm Might stumble a bit on my way, you know. Yeah, you get over to the, the front door. Um, and there's these two bouncers, these two uh, door guardians. I don't, I don't know what else you might want to call them. And they've got their backs to the the entrance their arms are sort of crossed they're sitting on either side and they pause they, they hold up a hand to tell you to stop as you come forward and a one I, of I them taps to, the sign next to them that says oh. guild members only when they hold up a hand i i start holding up my hand as if i thought he wanted to high five me and then i get really disappointed <laughs> and then i like do a weird giggle and i'm like hi i'm uh they think it's kind of cute they give you a high five oh I look back at like my sisters from the alley and I'm like <laughs> I'm like super cheery now. Uh so I heard about this new uh Guild of Cobblers bar mm. bar thing, Cobbler Guild. And Guild of I the Cobblers, know, yep. Yes. Yep, that's the full name. We, Bar's not part how, of it. How do are you part of it? Are you a cobbler? No, I'm security. Head of security okay. actually. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, and how do we join the Guild of Cobblers? What are the requirements? I take that's, off my little writing pad. That's not my area of expertise, but as I understand it, you have to make a uh, a masterpiece. A masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then present it to the 
the guild committee guild committee mm -hmm. uh-huh it's really well organized in such a short amount of time it's really impressive what do you mean it's been going on for weeks months even for weeks months mm -hmm. <gasps> Oh, can't believe I just heard of that. That's crazy. Are you a cobbler? Yeah. How do you not know about this place? All the cobblers in town know about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe they forgot about me. Are you sure you're not just a wannabe cobbler? <gasps> no, 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 no. Have you ever I, made a shoe I... in your life? Yeah, I did. Yes. I made these shoes. And I like stand up on like one foot and I'm like... <laughs> Which you do actually quite well. Um, and they're more impressed by your acrobatics of standing on one foot than anything else. Uh, and they go, look, I'm I'm just security here, all right? Mm. I can't help you with any of those details. But until you get your Cobbler's Guild card, can't let mm. you in. And where do I present my masterpiece? To the... Council? To the council. And where, where do I find the council? Do they have like a council area? Inside the guild hall. And I can access it without a card? No, you need a card to get in. So how do you... Ever Look, I, I don't know these things. I, I'm just security here at the tavern. Um, hmm. okay. Maybe Maybe it's upstairs. I don't know. That upstairs hasn't finished yet, though. I think they organized the whole thing before they started construction on the building. Are you sure you're a cobbler? Yeah. Are you from right. this town? Yeah. What's your I name? I know. Kid? Pebble. Pebble Cobble Feet. From the Cobble Feet Quarry? He shrugs. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have Maybe Sorry, you heard I'm new of here. My, maybe you heard of my sisters, uh, Leslie and Boldara. Not even. Oh well. Sorry. I mean, I mean that's kind of comforting in a way. <laughs> all right, all right. Thanks for the info. Uh, have fun. Looks like you're doing a good job preventing me from entering. Yep. So. You got to move on. Can't have any looky loos. <laughs> Bye. Have What's fun, your kid. name? Uh, my name <laughs> is Rex. Rex, the doorman who high-fived me. I'll remember that. All right. I go back to the group. Okay. It didn't get in, but I got a high-five. Guy's name is Rex. Doorman Rex. And it seems like this <laughs> whole business of Guild of Cobblers has been going on for months. To enter it, apparently you need to present a masterpiece. And but to present it, you need to go to a place where you need a member's card, and that makes no sense. That's it. That's all I got. What do you think, Boldara? <sighs> I think if this place has been operating for months and we haven't heard of it, they got some shit marketing, Lizzie. I agree. What do you think? Do we? break in or do we just go somewhere else where the vibe's better i think that their complete oversight in not inviting us to the cobbler's guild is honestly a little embarrassing for them and we're doing them some great social graces is that a thing by coming here and rectifying this and attending anyway so i think that we maybe explain the situation a little better no offense pebble to rex over there and i uh, i think it's attainable to get inside um i'm like there... straining to try and see if like bethany's in there like are there there's windows? like another blonde like... yes there are many windows are there windows like around the corner they couldn't see um these little lighter spots on the walls are the windows so yeah, like this window and this window right here, these guys might not see that unless they step out into the streets. Um, you could probably poke your eyes through this one or or this one, or, you know, considering there are people walking in the street that I'm just not gonna put a hundred tokens on the map for, like you could probably press your eyes up to this window for a moment or two without anyone noticing or caring. 
I want to make it sound with minor illusion, with minor illusion, that that window has been broken, and see if the guards will run to it. Um, if this one has been broken. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't you? Why don't we place our characters on the map so we know our positions? Whoops, we don't need two pebbles. Um, uh, you show me where you are. So that way I mm. we know what we can do from where what's what's I the dealio. I was assuming we're kind of like let's see. Uh like I figured we were next to like looking around a corner like mm -hmm. I can't go any further than oh, this gotcha. but like I to the side of this building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To try to get them to run away from us and us to slip in the door. Okay. So let's make this a larger map then. And let's give us some other stuff on the sides. He's uh, a master. You can just do that? A dungeon master. Whoa. The Sims mm -hmm. could never. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then. Yeah, it'll so be... like in this alley, kind of. be the market that's kind of quieting down in the evening all right so it's in that alley we'll bring over the guards and we'll bring over yeah the rest of the players okay so we're in the alley and we want to make the sound of prestidig uh, prestidigitation or minor illusion whichever is easier to pronounce breaking <laughs> like a window that you can see right so like this one here is that within range of... Oh, do I have to be able to see it? No, it's just a sound. Uh, okay. So I'm, I'm just making it sound like the windows. Right, but you've got a range of 30 feet, so where... Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Then I guess... This, this thing that I'm standing next to, mm -hmm. are those like open doors? Um, the door should probably be shut by now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the right in front of the door, there's like these like rock patches. Are those this right here? Anything I could take cover under? Yeah. This is a staircase leading up to the second floor. Um, mm. and there is oh, a, those are an inside. area. Well, no, this is this is actually outside. This is just like a dirt section, uh -huh. um, along the the walkway. Uh, with stairs that lead to a, a second floor. And there is space underneath the staircase, if you want, but that's directly in sight of the people across the street. All right. Well, there's nothing for it, but to go to the other side of the building, like mm -hmm. behind the mm -hmm. building and come back up. Um, mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I'll just, you know, stay just out of sight. Mm -hmm. within 30 feet of that window excellent but i want the i want my sisters to stay on the other side because i think there's a likelihood that if they run toward this window they will see me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if they see me i'll distract them so my sisters can run inside okay so sisters on the left side bard on the right side minor mm -hmm. illusion the sound of glass breaking from around the window mm -hmm. and then We'll see what happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to give me your very best performance check because you got to know the sound of glass breaking. So what is your intuitive like glass shattering in the middle of a, a busy bar sound coming out like? You said persuasion or performance? Performance. Okay, and we oh, will contrast no. that to their That's insight really check. It is. It. Uh, well, they rolled a natural 20 on their insight check anyway. So they mm. definitely don't recognize that as a, a window breaking sound. Uh, there's something like glass shattering, and it appears to the occupants maybe that it was maybe a glass instead of a window. Mm, like someone dropped a glass. Yeah, or just a weird noise that is kind of hard to notice and people look around for a moment and then they don't see anything and they, oh, I must have just heard something weird. I mean, it is a cantrip. Can I just like take a deep breath and try again? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, my confidence is shot. Yep. What'd you say? It's shattered. Ah! <laughs> Two breaking that glass sounds and people are kind of like, what is going on? There's nothing breaking over here. It just sounds like, push, push. <laughs> is there steam? <laughs> it was some passing gas. I can't quite place it. <laughs> should I, should I just go distract them? I wave, no, give me one more chance. <laughs> Try one more time. Okay. 10. Uh, well, maybe you'll get lucky and they'll botch their insight check, huh? Nope, nope, nope. Still not quite sounding like there's danger around the area. Maybe that did sound like glass cracking. That was definitely someone dropping a, uh, uh, a glass this time. I now will try to make it look like there is fire around the corner <laughs> and the flames are like licking out from the side of the building. There's people in the street. You might scare some of those innocent civilians walking around. I mean, it's not real fire. They'll be fine. <laughs> a fire seemingly breaks a out on the other side of the building. And instantly, yeah, like, the crowd the begins to uh, cry and back off and hurry away from it for a moment. And instantly, you know, this guard will pop out over here. Um, this one will pop inside. This one will pop out over here. Uh, just to see what's going on as the crowd begins to scatter about. Uh, this guy over here hears the shouting, but he can't see the fire, so he's just chilling. I um, like try to meld with the crowd and just say, like, <gasps> the guild is burning down! Ah! And I'm just like trying to add distraction so my sisters can run in the door. <laughs> All right, sisters, <laughs> now's your chance. You're going to want to run in, right? Oh, yeah, bold. sure. Boldara is going to make sure that Pebble gets in first, so she's going to set up a, a post defense here just to, to catch that guy, if that's possible. I mean, nobody will notice me, especially if Dex away. I know my sister's been ninja training. I have ultimate confidence <laughs> in her I have abilities. been ninja training. This is my true purpose. All right, Boldara. Or not Boldara, uh, Pebble. You want to blend yeah. in and look like you're just walking in and you're part of everyone yeah. else here. Go ahead and give me a stealth check. See if you can sneak on in. Yeah, that's all you needed. Ten, Ten was the number. That was it. Uh, nice. You slip on in past the guard. Everyone's kind of looking around at other stuff and you're sort of short stature and, uh, yeah. you know, low charisma and awkwardness just helps you blend right in mm. without anyone paying any attention to you. Nobody dropped any membership cards, right? I just no. kind of look around. <laughs> no, 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 no. But what about you, Boldara? You're a bit taller and more imposing. Um. What are you yes. going to do? But does the guard still have their back to me? Yes. Yes, it okay. does. So I'm just going to see if I can smoothly transition from my, like, <clears throat> Like linebacker move to just like kind of standing up and like pick and rolling back around that wall into the door after my sister. All right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, the you're gonna just pick and roll and roll and roll right on in. I'm gonna need you to make me a deception check since you're not trying to hide, but you're just trying to act like you belong, and the guards can't see you, but like the other guild members might notice you. So give me a deception check for your social smoothing out. <laughs> no. You stand out like a sore thumb. You okay, roll in. What am I standing against the wall? Am I the wall? You, you look like a person who walked into a party that they're not invited to. <laughs> like, you look like that. You Is look Bethany just like there? that. Can she see me? Is she looking at me? Oh my god, give me a perception check because someone starts calling, Hey, who's that woman? Oh god, I'm sweating. Eight. Do you I don't see Bethany. Look. You don't okay. see her. She's she's not here. Um. But someone says, Guard! And this person will turn around, check that one! And the guard will be like, Hey, you got your card? No. Well, you gotta get out here. And they, they'll kick you out. Meanwhile, this one will have come over. Okay. These two will have come over and they'll see that it's it's an illusion. It's, there's actually no heat coming off of it. It's not dangerous. Um, and they will mutter something about like, damn fool sorcery children always screwing around. Fire is not something to play with and shout into the air. You could get someone killed by shouting fire. You know that? 
But yeah, kids. Inside is Pebble. You made it in. What are you gonna do, Pebble? So sneaky. Blend in. Blend in. Don't let them see my dragon staff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I guess I'll walk around and kind of look at like. Is there anyone from the guild? Like, do I recognize any fellow cobblers? Yeah, you see Sammy here. Sammy knows. Yeah. <laughs> Sammy's you... at the guild. Yeah. Yeah. What about the temple of things? No, you don't see Sister Helen here. No, Okay. not at all. Okay. Can Sammy. I, uh, as the guards are kind of like going back to their stations, like mm -hmm. right as the fire thing is kind of ending, mm -hmm. can I try to look like I was one of the patrons that came out and I'm like, phew, glad that's over. And I'm just going back in. Like Yes, but I'm also going to need you to make here. me a deception check to like socially, you know, I was already in the building 19. to begin with. Absolutely. Wow. I yeah. can't perform, but I can lie. Yeah. Uh, you, you walk right in and he actually gets out of it and says, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me. Oh, no problem. No mm -hmm. problem. All right, you've made it in two. But as the two of you are coming in, who should be coming round the corner? It's Francesca and Bethany together. They're stepping out of the, or they're stepping down the alleyway, down the street in your direction. Left her out there by herself. Mm -hmm. Is this as I'm being like ejected from the building? That as you're getting ejected from the building, it's the two of them in like not quite matching, but definitely planned together outfits, walking down the street, looking fantastic. Oh, Boldara. Uh, I like see them like honestly, it's the shoes. Like I see them feet first. They're wearing like matching, like adorable, like white leather. Like, like I just and I'm already crying at the shoes, and I'm already stuck in this awkward pose, and I am so drunk and sweaty because I've just been throwing axes. Ah, <laughs> uh, Bethany, Beth Bethany, hey. Oh, I didn't think you knew about this place. Oh, you know me, it's not really a cool place until I've been kicked out of it, so I just thought I'd swing by and see if it was worth it. It's not. It sucks in there. Well, would you uh, like to come go. in? I'm, uh, we own the place. I'm so sorry. It's terrible in there. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Have no. I introduced you to my fiance? <gasps> no, this that's is Francesca. Okay. I'm Francesca, gonna... um, this is an old schoolmate of mine. Ah! Hold on. Hey. Francesca goes, oh, they, I think we're they, acquainted. Yes. Didn't you have parents once upon a time? Come on, Francesca. Let's go inside. Oh, excuse me, Voldaro. We have to go. We're expected. And they will head on in. I'm sorry. Oh, God. I'm just looking for solidarity, for anything, for humanity, for dwarf manity from these security guards. Wow, do they take pity? Yeah, yeah. Rex comes out and like puts a hand on your shoulder and goes, that was really tough. I'm sorry about that. Do you need a hug? She's my world, bro. And I'm just like, she I'm not was your go. world? Oh my God. What did you do to drop the ball on that? She's amazing. Oh, and I blow my nose and is like, Oh, this is, I just had this cleaned. Oh. <laughs> his little vest that barely covers his chest. Just had this cleaned. It's just in his chest hair. It's everything. Oh. I was going to sit down on the cobblestones, like four feet from the entrance and cry until my sisters come out. That's healthy. <laughs> okay, it's sisters on the inside. What's the plan? I, 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 I see them coming and I, I guess I tell... I tell my sister, Lasley, isn't that, is that Bethany and Francesca? I hope they didn't run into Voldara. I want to find the drunkest person near me. 
in mm -hmm. order to try to gain advantage, and then I want to try to sleight of hand pickpocket them and steal their membership card. Mm, yeah, well, there is, there are a couple of folks nearby who are happily celebrating the opening of the guild hall because apparently you've come here on opening night. Um, and how do you want to like? They're sitting down, so how are you gonna pick their pockets? You know, it's is an there awkward anyone, spot. You know, like people who sit down and they like pile their wallet on the table, like their oh, personal yeah. effects are just out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like, if anyone has their card just like sitting with their personal effects, I'll go for that. If not, uh, I'll swipe like a purse or something and then okay. rifle through it and then be like, oh my gosh, you dropped this. <laughs> okay, so if you make me a perception check on a 18 or higher you can spot a card that is like stacked somewhere and you can like specifically see a card on a 13 or higher you can find a purse that you think you can swipe anything else below that everything seems to you to be a little bit too guarded do you want me to scout for you i feel like i'm good at scouting yeah and look at the perimeter yeah let me give that a shot I'm excellent at scouting. Yeah. Oh it's yeah, you found spirit, one. It's the spirit of the inspection mm -hmm. hat that still mm -hmm. flows through me. While you're looking around and you find one such thing over here on the side, you know, no one's paying attention. A little pebble walking around the area. You spot exactly, you know, someone's got their wallet out. Their card is just sort of sticking at it. You can see the, you know, the, the membership card text at the very edge. Mm. And as you're looking at that and like looking back to your sister, it appears that Bethany, not Bethany. Um, no, actually, it appears that Bethany has spotted Lazuli. L no, that's not your name. Lazuli. 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 And she approaches you and goes, oh my god, Lazuli. Aren't you... What are you doing here? I saw your sister outside. She was a mess. Um, If I was making eye contact with Pebble, I just kind of look meaningfully at the badge and I'm like, it's gotta be you. Like, Yeah, I'm gonna go I'm like, for it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Bethany. Hi. I didn't think you were a- I got it! I got it! I got it! You swipe <laughs> no, it. Did you get no one even... I, I look at it like, I, I get it like super fast, and then I, my eyes are like glowing with that, with with that pride. Role, it turns out to be three badges, right? <laughs> like... <laughs> um... uh, I'm, I'm so proud right now. I like- she, Pebble no, no. is almost thinking of like putting the badge up on like her chest as like <laughs> a thing but she's like no i'll just keep it cool keep it cool keep it cool Sounds keep good. it cool keep it cool but meanwhile bethany's like um my fiance owns this place and i didn't think you were a card carrying member i seem to recall that when we were looking for who to invite you didn't make the cut why would you get in here well you know me i i don't like to say negative things about people um you're your craftsmanship is perfectly adequate for repairs. Hmm. Could you show me a shoe you've made? Oh, I don't work with my hands. My daddy owns a blacksmith shop. That's I'm going to so marry the head of the Cobblers Guild. Like, if craftsmanship is the requirement, then maybe you don't really belong here either, huh? No, I'm married to the owner. It's okay. Oh, I'm about oh. to be. Yeah, you know me. Oh. I get places by association sometimes. Wouldn't that be uh. nice if you could too? Mm. Hmm. By the way, when you go, tell your sister, I'm really glad she didn't say anything to embarrass herself. I'm a little... I had Sorry, fun. Horrified at your own behavior. Uh, evil? No, we had a great time. It was nice to hang out with the common folk for a little bit, but, you know, would never have worked out. And she was such a dear by not making it more awkward than she does. Where's Francesca? Um, Francesca's back over here, you know, talking with um, a waiter or something, but like, clearly looking at this conversation out of like the side of her face definitely seeing what's happening but totally paying attention to something else have i met francesca before maybe casually you don't have like a, a strong relationship with her you've like met at like um booths where people are selling wares and you might have like shook shaken her hand once upon a time 
and like, you know, oh, hey, these are yours, cool, as you're like walking around and looking at stuff, but not a strong relationship. In my character description, you said I was hot of face. Oh yeah. Um, I'm going to catch Francesca's eye and give a smolder. What? Okay. And I and then I'm gonna be like, so nice to see you. And then I'm gonna go over to Francesca and like lightly touch her arm and be like, I feel like. I feel like we've met like either here or like even in another lifetime i don't know and just like lay it on thick flirt with her all right so you start you leave bethany behind you head over mm -hmm. to francesca and you do these things mm -hmm. you start talking this up and francesca's looking at you um and i'm gonna give her a what would you call this sort of check um yeah, what's like a flirt a, check? It's persuasion? Charisma? Persuasion? Okay. Persuasion, yeah. Why don't you give me a persuasion check? Yeah, 12 is good. The sheep's picking up on it. Uh, she's like, oh, you do look familiar, actually, now that you say it. I, where do I know you from? Let's try to figure it out. Um, let's see. Was it a summer camp? Uh, year 800? Like that time where we all just like took off our clothes and went swimming naked in the <clears> lake? <throat> uh, excuse me. Hi, says Bethany as she strolls on over. What's this going on? Oh, uh, you know Bethany? She, um, well, she, she gets around. So she's dated my sister, of course. But, um, how do uh, you know her? Well, we're engaged. Bethany, do oh you my know? Gosh, I'm so Bumso? sorry. Oh, that's what, so, do you have to that's be so sorry about awkward. anything? Oh my gosh, I'm. Wow, I. I kind of like I'm looking at Bethany and looking. Lazuli, what what is this? Um. She says, getting you know, butting in between. I mean, I wouldn't want to like say anything that would make you feel weird about your fiance, Francesca. So I'll just. You know, it was really nice to see you. Uh, I would love to see you again, but it seems like maybe you've made some choices and I, yeah. Francesca, she doesn't have a card. She's not supposed to be in here. Francesca's oh, just a I little mean, bit taken aback. Oh, well, I mean, are you the guest of someone? Did you, members can bring family and friends or, or you know, gives her a look. either way, I think, um, vibes a little off for me tonight so i don't know hopefully francesca we we meet again and i like kiss her fingers before i leave i just walk away give me a second persuasion check this time at advantage no <laughs> oh that's nice you overplayed your hand the 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 kiss on the fingers was just a little bit too much and uh, as you make your way out and the guards you know part and let you out and everything you can see the two of them conspiring in the back of the place uh, with some very animated gesturing and then kind of like a her sister coming out from the side. <laughs> At least I got that. Mm -hmm. Do I uh, hear them conspiring? Because I'm still here with my membership card. <laughs> yeah, well, Pebble, um, where are you going? What are you doing? You're sort of fitting in in the way that you seem to belong I, you have a card uh, it's visible yeah. and no one's questioning you so you're just chilling yeah i think i you know what i you know might as well since i got in i would just spend the night here and kind of listen to people talk kind of like try to blend into the conversation if i see you know i'm trying to get any leads about who could have like mm -hmm. have it out for us that would be my goal well give We're me just waiting outside <laughs> <while you hang laughs> Give me one last like perception check. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. That I'm just tall enough to see in the window, and you're just short enough that you can't. So I'm like relating to you, and be like, "They're the punch bowl." Fine. She's talking to her still. <laughs> I'm still in there. <laughs> All right. Fine. Yeah, great. you it, you can't overhear any of their conversation. It's whispered. Okay. They're on the ground floor for a little while, then they head up these stairs to continue the conversation in a more private capacity. Um, it's okay. The last thing you will notice before you head out for the night as everything begins to close down is that Francesca comes down 
um, and goes to talk to Rex, the leader of the security. And they have a nice long chat as like all the customers are leaving and Rex is like nodding. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Like uh -oh. he's been giving instructions or orders of some kind. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Got it, uh-huh, uh-huh. And um, you can make your way on out. And I think that's where we're going to end our session for the evening. Uh-oh. Hope Francesca didn't say anything too bad to Rex. <laughs> okay. Before we finish our campaign for the day and head out, um, I'd like to hear a little bit from each of our players about our characters. Uh, let's start with the youngest one of the party. That's uh, Jen. What do you think that your character did well today or that you did well with your character today? Um, that I did well with my I I think I was pretty good at being a dork as intended. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, going do you feel maximum that, weird. Do you feel that door, being a dork comes naturally to you, Jen? Oh, yeah. It's pretty close to my true self. I'm just pushing it a little bit more. Nice. <laughs> nice. I think with the years, you know, I've learned how to not be too weird, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Sorry, did I cut you off before you finished your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I'm also pretty proud of that Delta, that side of him. So, like that, that was pretty good. good. That was pretty good. And All my right. inspection hat moment. That was good. Too. Those <laughs> I like are my the inspection hat and the magnifying glass. Those were nice. Yeah, that was good too. Those All are right. my top three. Okay, coming up as the second youngest, we've got Boldara. What do you feel Boldara, Boldara did well or you did well with today? Well, I feel like we got a good sense of maybe how large the town and community is by mm. virtue of understanding how much of it Boldara has made herself unwelcome in and why. Mm. Um, mm. And honestly, those are kind of threads that connect the community. I want to say a common enemy or like a common, you know, pity target. And the saddest of the three orphans is probably this uh, broken hearted and, uh, you know, soft hearted and a little soft headed uh, barbarian <laughs> sister with her short <laughs> beard and her sobbing in public. Sweetie. Oh. Eliciting absolutely zero sympathy, but well, I guess from Rex a little bit. That was that was nice. Boldara breaks my heart. I really thought yes. that it was going to be Pebble that was the heartbreaker here, and it's not. It's really not. <sighs> yeah. That's I agree. Your debtors. <sighs> yeah. Okay, and last but not least, we have the eldest of the sisters. What do you feel you did well or your character did well today? I knew that she was going to be like a persuader and performer and i play a lot of characters like that but she turned into just like a complete unabashed liar which i don't mm. normally play mm. and that's kind of fun i kind of dig it like good for her you know her mm -hmm. parents are dead her business is failing she's mm -hmm. got to get what she can from this life mm -hmm. uh and i think she she knew how to play some people and then not some others but you know you miss all the shots you don't take so that's true kiss the yeah. hand you know Mm -hmm. all right well that's going to be it for city dwarves we will be back in the near future we'll talk about scheduling after this um and in the meantime you can find me on twitch.tv slash koibu or you can find her on twitch.tv slash anna prosser or her on twitch.tv slash live in pink or oh wait what's the angle it's that way the her on twitch.tv <laughs> slash seltzer um and socials are also above our names you can find us those places good night everybody <laughs>